Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered here by Go Chevrolet, live on this Wednesday morning. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. We'll be here with you until uh, 9 a.m. this morning as we are getting set for this Wednesday. We'll talk to Nick Underhill from New Orleans.Football as uh, he will be here later this morning talking about the latest from New Orleans Saints mini camp, mandatory mini camp for the Saints with 100% attendance for the black and gold. Dennis Allen's first live practice with his full team. It's the first live practice in nearly three years on the Saints facility. As far as the preseason goes, we'll talk, or the offseason goes, we'll talk to Dennis, or we'll talk to Nick Underhill about Dennis Allen and the New Orleans Saints coming up here at 8.30 this morning. 8.15, Representative John Stefanski will step by, uh, stop in with uh, the latest and wrap up the legislative session for us as we'll talk some NIL stuff. We'll talk a little bit about what some of the issues uh, that uh, Representative Stefanski was dealing with during uh, the state legislation. And then Joe Sloan, LSU quarterbacks coach, will be here at 7.30 this morning. He'll be coming through here. Looking forward to our conversation with Coach Sloan as he spent uh, nine seasons uh, at Louisiana Tech uh, really putting up great numbers with the Bulldogs offense. He coached Trent Taylor, who led the uh, who led college football in receiving back in 2016. Taylor, of course, and now a part of the Cincinnati Bengals uh, wide receiver core. So we will talk to Sloan lots about what's going on. Camp wrapping up last week, big-time recruits, and obviously uh, the quarterback position at LSU uh, might be the, uh, the, the, the most competitive going into fall camp. So lots to get to here on today's show. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. We appreciate you being here. Daily, we're brought to you by Go Chevrolet online at G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. Easy to find them online. All the inventory uh, right there for you at uh, at Go Chevrolet, as you can find them there. Go Express Auto Sales, G-E-A-U-X, uh, Go Chevrolet.com, and Go Express Auto Sales, located on the corner of Florida Boulevard and Sherwood Forest. About to get Lizzie. So, yeah, I was about to say, it's essentially, it's essentially become my homepage. I spent yes. about two hours on that thing last night trying to figure it out. Whittling down the list. We're Nick putting, Richard. Yes, we're putting together a little recruiting class, he said. Nice. Mm-hmm. Going a little, go through the star rankings. We'll see. See if we can pull in a little four-star. Don't have to be a five-star. Yeah. Just need somebody that can play. High five, high four-star. High four-star. Yeah. High ass. Yeah, great ass. <laughs> um, we will also talk to uh, Joe Sloan again at, uh, at 7.30 this morning. Uh, we will be here. We're talking, uh, talking LSU football. Uh, with uh, with Joe Sloan coming up here. Uh, our phone line is brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group. Real doctors, real solutions. Get in touch with Charlie Harvey and Jason Ramazan over there at uh, Metropolitan Health Group. They'll take care of you today. Stop in and see them. And uh, we are off and set here on this uh, on this Wednesday uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. Katie is out. Carpool Queen. Uh, last vacation of her summer. She'll be back uh, later this weekend. She'll be back on uh, Sunday. So she'll be back with us. Uh, on Monday on the show, uh, but Lloyd is here, Stewie is here, TJ's here, Bree and Jamil are here on this uh, on this Wednesday. So uh, lots to get to here. Yeah, Katie, um, take your time. Take your time. <laughs> house is in good hands. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. You the enjoy it. You play that house over there. Yeah, huh? I'm just. It's like essentially I'm living the Sims. Somebody else built this house for me, and I just get to live in it. I get to. I have her car now. Oh wow! I'm, uh, you know, I'm feeding the dogs. <laughs> I have full full access to the refrigerator. It's like I got picked up and put in the perfect house. So take your time, Katie. Have good hands. Literally from good. the outhouse to the penthouse. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Overnight. Uh, before we get started, don't uh, don't forget this Sunday is Father's Day. Father's Day is almost upon us, and Dead Soxie has the perfect gift idea for any budget. Whether it is a gift uh, that you're buying for yourself, Dead Soxie is excited to help you celebrate with style. Go to deadsoxie.com and take advantage of the site. Uh, site-wide, 35% off right now. You can stop a, uh, stock up uh, for gifts for your feet that will thank you time and again. Visit deadsoxy.com and use the promo code JORDY, J-O-R-D-Y, for 35% off of your entire order. Happy Father's Day from the Jordy Colada Show and from our friends over at Dead Soxy. Check them out, deadsoxy.com. Use the promo code JORDY to receive 35% off of your gift ideas uh, coming up here on this uh, on this Sunday, man, we had some uh, we had a segment yesterday that really hit the grease. We had uh, we had no idea that the Kayshawn news uh, was really breaking news on uh, on a Tuesday. As we looked up, remember I was uh, referencing the Tiger Rag article 
uh, that uh, Kayshawn was speaking to Tiger Rag after uh, after camp, and really there he had kind of talked about having the boot off. So I figured the conversations that uh, that Kay and I had 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 really become public knowledge after bringing light to them yesterday. But a lot of people uh, reacting to the news that Kayshawn is is set to go, and I can tell you it is uh, it's obviously a very uh, positive sign for this LSU offense and something that we can talk about with uh, Joe Sloan coming up here uh, and go in depth with uh, Coach Sloan about when he stops by here at 7.30 this morning is about this receiving core and just what it means to put Kayshawn back into the room at 100%. Like we talked a little bit about yesterday, a month and a half ago, two months when Kay was sitting in the studios, it just seemed like that story of him getting back to full strength was going to take a while. It felt like it was going to be a minute for him to, to, to feel right again. Remember, he had the second surgery that you know was kind of left out of the public's eye. I don't think that a lot of people were privy to that, yet um, he spoke a little bit about it in his stop here a couple of months ago. But you know that was obviously a setback for him physically, and it was going to take a minute, it felt like, for him to get back into... Uh, good physical shape, but it seems like he has beaten the clock. He has uh, put his head down and, and, and really bought into the rehabilitation uh, and gotten himself right here moving into the summer. And now he's got an opportunity to really gain some chemistry uh, with some of the guys that will be throwing the ball to him. Um, and it's it, it's exciting, uh, not only for Kayshawn, but for the LSU offense of what potentially he could mean there. And, and it really now kind of sets the order – right, of, of, of all the guys that you have coming in. I mean, you take Kayshawn out of the mix, now you're asking guys to, to play um, out of their comfort zone, right, where you may take a guy like Jack Besh and you ask him now to, to become more of a, uh, you know, of a, of a focal point, an attention grabber of, of the offense when he's playing in that second and third role behind Kayshawn who's taken up that number one slack he's in a very much more comfortable place, right, where he's going up against guys who may be the second or third top defender on the outside for the opposing team. He doesn't have the, uh, you know, all the attention of, of potential double teams coming at him. He's just in a much more comfortable spot, right? Jeray Jenkins, if Kayshawn's out, is going to have to play a different role. Brian Thomas, who looks like he had making, uh, taken some strides uh, in spring going into the offseason. Uh, now you're able to kind of set them back in order and, and really use them at their at their strength and take advantage of their skill set when you've got your number one player and your number one outside threat, Kayshawn Butte, uh, back in the wings for LSU. So a very positive sign. It just kind of helps establish like the pecking order. When you say like everybody kind of falls into like everybody kind of falls in the line after Kayshawn, especially with, is it fair to say that we haven't even seen Kayshawn at what could be like the peak of his powers? Mm-hmm. I would say like obviously what, nine touchdowns in six games last year. You started to see some of it, but I would say the rhythm of the offense wasn't there. It was so disjointed that it probably wasn't fair to, to him. He probably wasn't comfortable in terms of what they were trying to do offensively, and they didn't have an identity. If they can come in and, like, with a guy like Joe Sloan that's established pretty good offense as a quarterback's coach, find the right guy at quarterback, and he kind of was made it known that he, who he likes in Nussmeyer, if they can kind of establish some sort of identity – I think you could see Kayshawn absolutely pop because freshman year was a little weird, COVID year, don't, nobody's in the stands, don't really know what's going on. Second year, so disjointed without a head coach, essentially, gets hurt. This year, comes back, it could set up for him to be have an absolute monster of a year. So I feel like he's still a little bit under the radar nationally. Absolutely, I believe that. I mean, I think that there are, I think all the decision makers at the next level know who he is, Yeah, obviously. But when you think about the college football fans, I still think that there is a curiosity about really, you know, seeing him um, week in, week out. Obviously, his freshman season was such a blur, Mm -hmm. right? The way that he caught, you know, lightning in a bottle late in the year and really just kind of exploded onto the scene. He felt like the SEC's top freshman the last six games of his his first year in the conference. Uh, and that's a hell of a freshman class you're talking about now. I mean, this Will Anderson was in that freshman class coming out of, out of, out of Bama. Um, but, you know, I mean, like, it, it just felt like he was, uh, he was different. He was on a different level. And then, obviously, the way that he started his sophomore mm-hmm. year, it felt like he was on a rocket ship to, 
you know, really kind of nabbing that top player spot, that top position spot at wide receiver. And then, of course, the injury against Kentucky, the wheels fall off with the program, and people are, you know, kind of curious on where he fits in with Brian Kelly and this new LSU regime. And it felt like early on that there was some angst, right? There was some, some questions on whether or not he was even going to fit in at all. I think when Brian Kelly was making those comments publicly when he was – you know, first introduced in the job, there was some real sincere concern on whether or not what was going to be his buy-in, what was going to be Kayshawn's buy-in for for his junior season. And, you know, a couple of months later, like we talked a little bit about yesterday, I mean, it seems very clear and evident that the message has been sent and accepted by, you know, from Brian Kelly to Kayshawn and with him, you know, moving around the way that he is right now and getting himself ready for the season, uh, it's very exciting to think about what the offense could be because, you know, a lot like we talked about with the Saints, and we'll get to the Saints here in a little bit. We'll talk to Nick Underhill coming up at 8.30 this morning more about what's going on down at the, 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 the mandatory mini camp with the New Orleans Saints is that we talked about those weapons, but until you see them on the field yesterday, seeing Kamara run next to Alave and Jarvis Landry out there, obviously Mike Thomas wasn't dressed out, but he was in the building and around the facility. But I mean, you get to see these guys, Callaway, Marquez Callaway, um, you know, in and around those guys, Mark Ingram, who, you know, I know has, 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 has played a lot more, uh, good football than he's probably got left in the tank. I mean, obviously, the, 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 the good days of his football career are behind him. But having him in that, you know, in that mix, Taysom Hill being out there. I mean, when you put this collection of skill players around whoever the quarterback is going to be at LSU, I mean, it's, you, got, you got a lot of choices, man. I mean, when you started off and talking about John Emery, you got a guy like Jack Besh. And then you're talking about Kayshawn being back at full strength. And then you look at what's happening with guys like Brian Thomas and even Chris Hilton under the radar is really kind of making some strides and a guy that's going to be able to, you know, step in and, and really help you out um, in, in some spots. I just think that when you look at the collection of talent and skill and, and, and playmakers that this LSU team has, uh, having Kayshawn back at full strength and having him as a real option, um, man, it is – Exciting to think about. Remember daily, we're brought to you by GoFlow. GoFlow IV, G-E-A-U-X, FlowIV.com. Get in touch with our friends over on Jefferson Highway. A promo code for you over there. If you mention the Jordy Colada Show, you'll receive 15% off of your initial visit to our friends over at GoFlow. Stop in and see them. 7370 Jefferson Highway is where you can find them. If you're looking for a little energy, if you have been under the weather, if you are having trouble uh, sleeping or uh, just not feeling right. Stop in and see our friends over at GoFlow. G E A U X Flow I V dot com. G E A U X Flow I V dot com on uh, uh, is where you can find them online. Or stop in and see them on Jefferson Highway. Seventy three seventy Jefferson Highway is where you can stop in and see them today. They recommend that you make an appointment. They do take walk ins, but the easiest way to reserve that appointment is just log online. G E A U X Flow I V dot com. GoFlow I V dot com is where you can find them. Uh, and as, uh, as we tell you all the time, if you mention the Jordy Collada Show, 15% off of your, uh, of your initial visit over there. So uh, make sure and, uh, and drop the promo code uh, when you stop through over there. Um, Going back a little bit real quick. Yep. Were you surprised the way that Brian Kelly handled the Kayshawn Butte situation? Well, I mean... It obviously seemed to work, but I thought yes. that was a bit of a... That's... In the moment, I thought so. But like we said yesterday, I mean, it's a hell of a risk-reward as a, you know, even if you're a, a, a sitting coach in a job, um, you know, much less a first-year coach on a job. Now, look, Brian Kelly's coming in with a hell of a reputation. He's got skins on the wall. He's got respect within the coaching trade. So, you know, I mean, he knows how to measure his voice in a situation like that. But still, I mean, it's a hell of a gamble you're going to take as a new head coach in a program when you're asked publicly about your best player and the first thing you say about him is you're critical of him in the public his name right like i mean you know you don't know his name you're hoping that he shows up i mean you are sending a clear and direct message that you know is going to be heard and it's obvious that he had probably said something behind closed doors up to that point to get it to you know the the intersection where you say hey look we're going to call him out publicly today or if I'm asked about him, I'm going to tell the truth. 
But, you know, in the sense of Kelly and Butte, when you just look at him, Kayshawn Butte is the best player in LSU football's program right now. Brian Kelly's going into his first year of a 10-year contract worth $100 million where the majority of it is guaranteed. In the grand scheme of the whole operation and the relationship, Kayshawn and, Brian, and, Kayshawn and, and Coach Kelly, Kayshawn needs Brian Kelly more than Brian Kelly needs Kayshawn. It's crazy, right? Because you always would think the coach needs the player to succeed. But in year one of a 10-year contract, with the majority of the $100 million guaranteed, he's not going to lose his job for what happens on the field next season. I mean, really, it could get really, really bad, and still Brian Kelly would have the confidence that he would be coming back for the second year. We all anticipate that this is probably going to be, most probably going to be, the last year we see Kayshawn in purple and gold. I mean, he said as much himself. So Brian, Kelly, so Brian Kelly's first year compared to Kayshawn's last year? When Kay's got something to prove. Like, Kayshawn, to me, if he would have kept his pace as a sophomore in the trajectory that he was on, would have stamped himself as a top 10 pick when he was draft eligible, which will be after this season. And if he would have kept the pace up during his sophomore year, he could have gotten to the end of the year, and he could have made a Jamar Chase-type choice here in his third season. If he just wanted to sit it out and not play and get himself ready for the draft, he probably still would have been a top 10 pick, in my opinion. By everything that he had done his freshman season and if he would have ended his sophomore year on the pace that he was riding. Didn't happen that way. He got hurt, banged up in the middle of the year. It was a bad injury for a wide receiver. Come to find out in the offseason, he had a setback and another surgery. Now I got questions about Kayshawn Butte. If I'm a general manager, if I'm an owner, if I'm a head coach, a scout, if I'm making a decision on putting a roster together on a professional team, I know that if LSU's wide receiver, top wide receiver, is right, he might be the best in the sport. But the last time I saw him, he was getting carried off the field in Lexington. And the last I heard, he had to have a second surgery because the first one didn't go as planned. So now I need to see him play a little more. And for Kayshawn's experience, he's got to get on the field. Because he's got to ask, he's got to answer those questions that exist around his football life right now. Can you bounce back and play at the level that you've played at the last two seasons, where you have been single-handedly or one-on-one, -on -one, you've been unguardable? Can you still play at that level? And if he can, he's a bona fide top ten pick. But he has to answer those questions before he can advance. In football. So, by just that setup right there, Kayshawn needs Brian Kelly more than Brian Kelly needs Kayshawn. So, when you look at the way that Brian Kelly handled Kayshawn, it was a hell of a risk reward, but he got the reward out of it because I think he knew psychologically that this player is as good as you'll find in college football. But there's still questions that have to be answered around his game. And the only way to answer them is to get on the field. So if he doesn't think that he has to show up, or if he doesn't think that he's got to get himself in shape, or if he doesn't think that him, you know, of himself as a leader, then you know what? We're going to say it publicly and see how he reacts. And Brian Kelly called him out publicly and credit Kayshawn. He accepted it, digested it, and made the most of it. And I hadn't seen Kay in that type of mindset. Go grab coach, please. He's asking where to park. Just, um, I haven't seen Kay in that type of mindset since last summer, going into his sophomore year where he knew they can't guard me. I'm too good. And last week at that camp, that smile was back, that swagger was back, he was moving around, and he's feeling it. Coach Joe Sloan, LSU quarterbacks coach, is pulling up right now. He's parking his car. He's coming in right now. We're going to ask him all about quarterback competition, what's it been like working for Coach Kelly. He's a hell of a recruiter, man. 
if you paid attention to what Louisiana Tech was doing over the last nine years in Ruston, Louisiana, Coach Joe Sloan is responsible for a lot of the success that they were having, both on the field offensively and in the recruiting room. So we'll talk to him about what it's been like to recruit the LSU brand coming up here. And Kayshawn Butte, where's he fit in? offensively looking forward to our conversation with coach joe sloan coming up here in just mere minutes stick around remember city cafe our friends over at city cafe on the corner of o'neill and george o'neill been in business for a hundred years stop in and see squeaky miranda dirt cody miranda and the crew remember they got fresh seafood for you daily if you're looking for oysters char grilled or raw stop in and see them over at city cafe we're good friends meet o'neill and george o'neill stop in and see them city cafe br.net is the website if you're looking just for the daily lunch specials brunch opens up 10 a.m every sunday over at city cafe great people great service great food stop in and see them where uh, where good friends meet over at city cafe city cafe br.net lsu quarterbacks coach joe sloan next here on the jordy colada show driven and powered by go chevrolet Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Mike Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here, get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See ya. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check them out online at redsticksports.biz. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live on this Wednesday. Remember, check out our conversation with defensive line coach from LSU, Jamar Kane, earlier this week. All of our stuff brought back to you by RMB Builders, rmb-builders.com. We jump to the other side of the ball this morning and link up with uh, Joe Sloan, LSU quarterback's coach. Been looking forward to getting Coach Sloan into the studio and having an opportunity to talk about his time in Baton Rouge. It's been a hell of a whirlwind, I know, since he's been introduced uh, in early January as the quarterback's coach. But before that, spent nine years up in North Louisiana at Louisiana Tech and did a tremendous job of putting up numbers on offense and coaching that side of the ball and recruiting up there uh the way that they were able to get uh, a couple of the guys like Jalen Ferguson out of West Feliciana a couple of years back who ended up in the NFL uh and uh, Trent Taylor who we talked about as far as uh Joe Burrows one of his top targets up in Cincinnati uh we welcome in uh Joe Sloan here to the Jordy Colada show coach thanks for uh, joining us good to see you hey Jordy thanks for having me absolutely man uh let, let, let's start a little bit with the schedule I, I know that to get to to this point of mid-June uh, since January probably feels like a blink uh, for, for what you guys have had to uh, kind of hit the ground running. What has it been like since, since being introduced in, in early January as the quarterback's coach? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's definitely been quick, right? It's, I mean, it seems, like, uh, it seems like, yeah, just yesterday that we were uh, getting down here. I think it was maybe the, 
the fourth or fifth. Yeah. Uh, got down here and it's been rolling since. So um, had had a bunch of guys on campus. I think the second or third day that that uh, we were here, something like that. Um, a bunch of guys who who we ended up getting out of the transfer portal and <clears throat> it's it's uh it's been rocking and rolling it's been mm -hmm. fun um you know it took a just putting a staff together of that size you know coach i thought coach kelly did an awesome job of that and and just the 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 blend of type of people um some different backgrounds everything that that people bring to the table different you know different things that people bring to the table and it's been fun getting to know all of them i mean obviously i was one place for a long time yeah so uh so the transition's uh, definitely been something that it's it's been a while since I've uh, went through that, uh, but I think you uh, you get an opportunity to kind of re-energize and 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 refocus and and uh, set down a new foundation that uh, for moving forward. So it's been it's been great. What uh, the relationship with Brian Kelly? Obviously working for him now, but how did that 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 start as far as him reaching out to you and and. and getting on this staff what did you know about kelly and what has it been like to work with him here over the last six months so i had met i had met coach oh man i guess it was three four years ago at, at a at a conference um and got a chance to spend uh you know 20 30 minutes with him and and uh get to know him a little bit you know as soon as you meet him he's, he's just and i and i know people as uh around town as they get an opportunity to get around him he's so down to earth um he's just very engaged he's He's very present when he's talking to you. Yeah. I mean, he's he's uh, he was he was great. He he sat and visited with me and my wife for for uh, a little bit, and then you know, fast forward. Obviously, he gets the uh, he gets the LSU job, which uh, I mean, it was <laughs> I guess was was a surprise to uh, to to everybody, right? I'm ninety nine point nine percent of the world, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. So yeah, I, mean. I was fired up. Um, I was fired up. I, I I knew a few people who had worked for him up at Notre Dame, um, and. And just had always uh, spoke really highly of, of the organization that he had, the way that he approached things, um, the professionalism. So and I, I was uh, I was obviously excited for LSU, and then uh, there were some there were some connections there that we had, and and I think some uh, some people maybe who who we who we knew rekindled a little bit and and talked on my behalf a little bit, um, and then after that, you know, as as we moved along, he uh, we got an opportunity to get on the phone. Got on the phone for a little bit. I think it was a was a uh, had to be maybe Sunday afternoon or uh, Monday morning, something like that. Yeah. Um, spoke for a while. Uh, opportunity to come visit in, in in person for a little bit, just uh, C and I, uh, made sure that uh, we were in alignment, which we were. Um, you know, and I think that was really kind of the rest was history after that. I mean, obviously, um, it fit really well in terms of me being. Uh, a guy who could recruit Louisiana and, and had different relationships in Louisiana, um, and could help that way. But also being uh, being with the quarterbacks and and being able to help Mike Denbrock in any kind of way that I can, um, and and help LSU football in any kind of way that I can. Coach is really in, really involved with the quarterbacks, which is awesome. Um, it's been great so far. He is man, what a communicator he is. He has an unbelievable presence. Um, he's a great listener. And and what he does is he he really sets people up and makes sure they understand their roles, um, and puts them to work. And and I I've been I've had a blast so far. Yeah. It's been fun. Alignment is a word that we hear a lot coming out since Brian Kelly has been introduced as the LSU head coach. Coach Kane mentioned it the other day when he was here. The alignment on the offensive staff. You were hired. Brad Davis was was here at LSU on the offensive line. Uh, you were hired. It, it seems very quick. With Brian Kelly, Denbrock then comes in. Frank Wilson is a part of that offensive staff. Cortez Hankton. When when you say the word alignment, how, how does that offensive staff align? Um, well, and 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 I was referring to a little bit just on Coach Kelly's just some of his philosophies and, and beliefs at the quarterback yeah. position, um, and just some of the conversations that we had. Um, and I think uh, you know we naturally believed in a lot of the same things, um, but when you look back to you know I think your question regarding the offensive staff. Uh, Mike, Mike is awesome. He he does a great job of allowing everybody to be themselves um, and bring out the best of themselves. Uh, he sets a he sets a great tempo for our room. Uh, we have a blast in there. He, we we got a lot of good personalities, um, and I think he he wants those to to show, um, and he wants guys to bring the different different positives that they have to the room. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what he's been able to do so far uh, with the different guys that, that are in there. So that's. That's what's been fun. I think we all bring different things to the table, um, but he makes sure that we're all pushing in the same direction and, and we're all working together. Um, so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be 
fun to watch as we continue to come together and, and push towards this first season. Um, and you, you know how to, it, first time with anything, when you get a new group of people together, yeah. you know, every day's new. Um, but I think uh, that's been Mike's approach. Um, and, and he's done a, he's done an awesome job of it. It's, it's easy to see when you meet him. He's just really charismatic. He has this, he has a, he has a, a, a great presence. He's a, He's really good with people. Um, he makes you feel comfortable, uh, but he has a, he has an unbelievable energy to him. So it's it's been fun. It's been fun being with Mike and being with someone new. Um, but really, uh, we have we have we definitely have some fun in the office of staff. Right? <laughs> I would think so. Um, your room feels like it's the most competitive on the team as far as the position battle goes, or at least one of them. How do you evaluate the quarterback room? How do how, how do you look at that room going into the offseason? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, getting through spring, I mean, most of it was obviously just installing the offense. Um, and I, I think all four guys uh, really made some strides in terms of that and, and showed a lot of positives. Um, obviously, which, you know, I mean, you guys get to talk about all the time. So you guys, you <laughs> sure. know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the, all four have done a great job. They did. I, I think they really did a really nice job in spring of taking strides forward uh, individually and everybody and everybody's different in terms of what they need to get better at and and what they need to show um and then moving into summer and and i love the way they're working right now in the weight room for coach flint um but like i said i think i think spring a lot was it was everything was new for everybody so that, especially at the beginning there wasn't as much evaluation say the first few days um get into the flow and then i think uh we got some good opportunities for some guy to get guys to get some reps and i think everybody showed some positives um now moving into the fall it's going to be exciting first little bit of august um sure. and we'll be able to to narrow in and and decide on who gives us the best opportunity but you know that'll that'll go uh that'll be a collective uh conversation between a few guys on the staff when you set sail on spring i'd imagine that you had goals of what you wanted to get accomplished did did, did those happen did you get what you really wanted to take out of spring implemented? I did. I think, I think the biggest thing was is for um, – I think we needed to create a foundation. Um, we needed to create a foundation individually at, at the quarterback position. We also needed to create a foundation for the offense overall. Um, we needed to get a lot of things installed so that guys then could go back and do the work between spring and August that they need to do uh, to get prepared for us to have the type of season that, that we expect to have. Um, and I think that, that was the biggest thing. So I, I looked to that, and I think offensively overall, uh, a lot of that got accomplished. And then you look quarterback, you know, at quarterbacks individually. Their big thing was making sure that they got, they got to understand the offense. They got to understand what they're going to be asked to do. Um, and I think the other thing is all of them have strengths and weaknesses. And I think ha having, a, having a good idea, you know, and talking to them before I hadn't coached any of them. Yeah. So uh, we had to sit down and we had to talk, and, and, I, and I leaned on them a, a bunch to say, all right, I want you to think back to your last year, the last two years of your college career, um, and we got to lay out some things. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Uh, why? And I had having those those conversations, so I knew what they felt like they needed to work on, and then having constant conversations throughout spring. Um, I think uh, I want them to be aware of themselves. Um, I think that's so so important when it comes to to helping a guy develop, is that they're aware of. Um, what makes them what makes them special and they're aware of some things they need to improve on and I felt like uh, as we went through the spring I think that that everybody in that room understands um, where they're at and and what kind of work they needed to do over these you know past past month and and these next couple months heading into August and that that was my goal yeah. and I think uh, man I, I can't say enough about that room and their approach they have fun together they work hard together you know you you would never know if you come come visit with them, you would never know that they're in the middle of uh, battling out to see yeah. who can be the quarterback at, at LSU, man. I mean, so I think that's that's been cool. That's been fun for me. They've made it fun, um, and then it's it's gonna get yeah, it's gonna it, get full speed. It, it it feels like you got everything a quarterback room needs to have in all four players. You got a number one player in the country in Walker Howard. You got a a senior who battled adversity in in Miles Brennan, who's looking. Or, or an upperclassman in Miles Brennan, a guy in Jaden Daniels who's been a starter and comes to a new place, and then Garrett Nussmeyer, the guy that feels like he's kind of right there, set, uh, ready to set to take off. When, when you look at the room collectively, uh, and we can start with Miles. Obviously, he came back and, and, and made the announcement as soon as Coach Kelly uh, got the job. When you look at them individually, how do you evaluate them 
you know, going into the offseason? What's what, what, what does Miles Brennan look like to you after coaching him through 15 practices of spring going into his first offseason under your tutelage? Yeah, I think Miles just is a, a his consistency and leadership has been great, um, you know, and that's uh, he's been fun. I, I've, you know, just being being around this area and, and all that kind of stuff, I've uh, had some different run ins with Miles in the past and um, things like that all the way back to high school. And he, he's a he's just an, he's an awesome individual. So yeah. uh, he's been he's definitely been fun to work with, fun to get to know. Um, and I think, you, you know, you can understand he just shows up every single day. You know, and, yeah. and, and you know what to expect. So it, it's definitely been great. How's it been, Jaden Daniels, for a guy like Jaden Daniels coming to a new place? He's got he's got skins on the wall somewhere else, but he's coming into a new league with a new coaching staff. How has you how have you seen him kind of adapt to that? No, I think that's I think that's always a probably for Jaden. It's been great. It's been an opportunity for him to uh, redefine himself a little bit. You know, sometimes when you get in when you're in a program and and you've been there for multiple years. Um, and, and you leave and you come in, um, and now all of a sudden you kind of know who you are, uh, but nobody else does, so you have an opportunity to really set the stage for, for kind of what you want to be as a football player and, and who you are as a person, and I think he's done a great job of that. Yeah. He's, a, uh, he's very observant. You know, he's a calm, cool, collected guy. Um, so he, he's come in and, and not tried to overpower anything and not tried to, uh, you know, you know, be too over the top in terms of things with, oh, this is me and I'm this and I'm that. He's just coming to work. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I've, been, I've been really pleased with that of him. He, he's he's uh, another guy that's just got a great personality, uh, fun to be around every day. Garrett Nussmeyer came through here after you guys finished up spring, and obviously he's got the bloodline and, the, and, and his dad obviously played the position and coaches the position. He played some reps last season as a freshman. Uh, how, how do you evaluate Nuss after seeing him play limited last year, a couple of practices in spring, and now going into the offseason? I mean, it, Garrett, Garrett's, again, and, I, and I, this is kind of repetitive in terms of just an enjoyable guy to work with. He's, he's, he can be challenged. Uh, he loves to respond to challenges. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, obviously – just coming in as a young guy, you have a lot of things that you're kind of trying to create uh, what you're going to be as a college quarterback, and and I think that's where a lot of your growth takes place. Um, so he's he's uh, looking at all that, and and we're working together on that as to um, what he needs to improve on, and and he's done a great job of of studying, of listening, um, and then going back and, and correcting. Uh, some of those things that he needs to continue to get better at, and I, I've loved the way that he's attacked that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a ton of talent. He's got a, he's got a great energy and passion, right? I think that shows. Um, so it's it's definitely enjoyable to watch him uh, go out and practice every day. Every every day, he ju- he just loves football. Is it fair to say that this is a three quarterback competition? That Walker Howard, the expectation for him is to to redshirt him and allow him to see this this game from from the sideline in his first year, or what is the expectation of a guy like Walker Howard in his first season I, in a competition say, like this? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 like, I like all four guys that we have in the room. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see Walker's growth. I think most, the most growth comes from out of spring. You know, Walker uh, uh, comes in, working through some, some injuries, moving into uh, um, getting to spring, gets back, is ready to rock and roll on the first day. Um, you know, didn't have an opportunity to throw that much going into spring and all of a sudden he's back he's learning he's drinking through a fire hose when it comes to that I I am excited to see what he was at the end of spring versus what he is at the beginning of August and and um, Walker he's just a magnetic personality he's got a great mm-hmm. uh, just just calm presence to him uh, but yet he's 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 energetic he's passionate so um, he, he's fun to be around I think it's it's obvious why he won a lot of football games in high school it's obvious yeah. why um, you know, uh, you can. You know, he's just a. He's he's someone who, when when people talk about, right, they light up. Um, so I'm ex- I'm excited to watch what you know his growth um, now that he understands what college football is all about. You know, and really got a true taste of it, and he can walk into August and and get after it a little bit. Yeah. Now to uh, to to uh, some fun stuff. I'll get off the quarterbacks. I can tell you're like, all right, man, <laughs> let's trial. get out of here. <laughs> right, I'm not no, giving Jordan, you any more that. info. I'm not giving any more info. Um, Kayshawn. Uh, looked, I saw him at the camp last week, and he looks like he's moving around pretty good and said that he was, he was moving around well. How do you evaluate the skill around your, your position group when you look at 
Kayshawn, the wide receivers, and you got Emory back, who looks like he's motivated for his senior season. How, how do you look at the group around your your spot? Well, I think uh, I'm sure you guys have talked about it on the show a couple of times, but I think we got some receivers here. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> you do. The, you know, being in the state of Louisiana, there are there there's there are a lot of skilled players here um, who can who can run, who can catch, who can who can attack the ball. I mean, just just some really talented guys. I mean, you go back to the the 2019 team, you know, and and you look at the guys on the perimeter there, right? Where all the, where all of them from? And and we got a lot of guys. We're very fortunate right now who are other Louisiana natives who are here, right? Who are here and and can make plays on the perimeter. I think you, man. I mean, I, I couldn't even. You start to name them, and it's like, you, <laughs> what does it end? Wet, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. It's fun when, when you when I talk to other people who. Um, whether it be guys that I know who are LSU fans or other other coaches, and you, and you start naming off, and you talk about Kayshawn, and you talk about Jack and Malik and uh, Kyron now coming in and having a good spring, mm-hmm. right? BT, Chris, Jare, uh, I mean, <laughs> Jesus, you go, you yeah. go keep on, going on and on, more, and on, right? more, <laughs> more. That's right. So it's uh, right. That's and and if I missed anybody, I, I, that was not intentional, <laughs> right? But. but uh, it's just an awesome group, and and I think Cortez has done a really good job again of it, getting those guys working together, uh, working around each other, holding them accountable, um, and they're holding each other accountable and they're pushing and and uh, it's been it's been fun to watch them fun to watch them work. But it was definitely, man, it's great. It was great in spring where it seemed like every day there was somebody else who was making a play. Okay. There was somebody else who was doing something right on the perimeter that and that's what it creates it, it, that's what it that's what it uh that's what we need we need explosives yeah. right we need explosives and a lot of those come from from those guys so um i'm excited uh i'm definitely excited to watch those guys in tiger stadium another group that i'm pretty excited to see in fall camp and kind of develop through the the, the early part of the season is the offensive line i think that brad davis did an incredible job of putting a group together that looks like it's going to be really competitive going into fall camp obviously will campbell was in in spring, and he, he got a lot of the attention, but there was a lot of guys who came in through the transfer portal and some faces that seem like, seem like they have solidified their spot under under Davis. How have you seen him run that unit and that group on, on their development the last couple of months? No, I think that that was, uh, you know, coming in, I mean, I, I you know, I didn't know much about, about yeah. our roster other than the guys that I knew coming, at, you know, from high school and from recruiting and that, those things. Uh, but obviously that was, that was fairly talked about. And I mean, just you you look about the end of spring, I think Brad has done a, a, a great job of, of from the beginning of spring to the end of spring and just exactly what you're saying there, Jordy. The, the, the situation that we're in right now going into the summer, I think we got an opportunity to really uh, make a statement up there and, and, and put ourselves in a position where um, that, that can be, you know, with a lot of new faces and a lot of new names in different places, yeah. um, but put together a group uh, who I think, just is going to have an attitude. Is mm-hmm. going to have uh, and and play a certain way and play together. Um, but definitely, it's it, it's been, you know, when you watch Will as, as a freshman come out and play the way that he did uh, in the spring. You know, as a true freshman who, yeah. who I guess he, I mean, he should have still been yeah. in high school. The prom, right? He should have been going to prom. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't think he went to prom, but he should have been going to prom. <laughs> just that he's taking right? care of Jack Besh's dog, uh, he's uh, playing dad. <laughs> yeah, which is just it. Don't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, but uh, yes, he is. He's walking around Jack's dog. I, I, where's Jack? You know, right? But uh, everybody wants to know. Yeah, but uh, no, I think he was obviously to come in and play the way that he did yeah. is a, at that position. That position's a uh-huh. man. That's a, it's a tough position, right? I mean, you're not, you know you when you when you're young, you go out, you throw and catch and all that kind of stuff. You don't go out and and oh, I'm a, I'm a kick slide real quick or hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know I'm gonna come off and tight reach somebody. Yeah. Know, that doesn't happen. So. Uh, that's a testament. That's definitely a testament to the to Will. It's a testament to football in the state, right? A testament to Neville High School. But then, uh, and then what Brad did with him over spring, uh, you know, and uh, and those guys. So it, it was fun to watch him. But I'm excited to watch that whole O line. I think uh, they've done awesome. And then flip the line of scrimmage. You guys, to me, I think will be in every game because of your defensive line. I, I think you've got a def- you've got an NFL group on that side of the ball. Coach Kane sat right where you were 48 hours ago and he was gushing about his his group. What do you, what, what did you see from those guys? I mean, whether it's Yeah, he should be. I uh, bet. Yeah, right. <laughs> got set to make a, a, a lot of money over the next <laughs> the next year. Get a raise off that group. Hey. Uh man, I I mean, you look across and and 
it just seems like you look across and you see that just just the body types in, in, sure. in general I right mean, just the length um the physicality the speed and and there's there's just there's depth yeah. right and that's what you need you need up front on both sides of the ball you need depth because as we know it's a violent game injuries happen and you, and you got to be able to have multiple guys but i think we got some people over there that are really explosive they can create i mean you know at times they can ruin a practice in a heartbeat. I know I bet. that. So, uh, I bet. but um, it, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun to watch them. I'm glad we don't have to play them, right? <laughs> right. When it's live, we, right. our guys always get red jerseys on when that when we're going <laughs> yeah, against them, right. which is positive. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it's definitely it's been fun to watch. But they, there's a there's a bunch of good guys over there too. With really good personalities, fun to be around. That's what that's what I found since I've gotten here. The the guys on the team, the guys on the team, man, they are they come to work. They, they have a smile on their face. They work hard. They're fun to be around. Um, they work together. Uh, that, that's what makes it enjoyable, right? When, you, when you're around a, a, a group of players who, who love what they do, all right, this, is, this is an unbelievable job. There's nothing better. And, and that's what we got right now. You came in with a hell of a reputation as a recruiter, in, in, especially in this state. You're from Virginia. You played at East Carolina. You spent nine years at Tech. What was it about the state of Louisiana that, that you saw – from a recruiting standpoint, because I think a lot of the draw to you was the relationships that you have within the state, the way that you've been able to recruit this state. How how wealthy of talent is is in this? Because you've seen them all. I mean, you've you've recruited Amik Robertson, who I know was an LSU Louisiana Tech battle down to signing day. I know that Frank Wilson was talking to Jalen Ferguson was he when he was at West Feliciana. He ended up being the sack leader. At Louisiana Tech, it, tell me the story how you got him. Uh, you can get Frank all mad at me, so, <laughs> pretending like you go to the office today. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, no, so Jalen. So when I got when I got to Tech, I was I, I was twenty six. Uh, Skip had had called me. I was I was uh, back in in Virginia for Christmas, and um, he had just got there. He said, "Hey, you want to come to you wanna come to Louisiana Tech?" and I said, absolutely, yeah. you know, uh, come on. And so I, I headed down. I, I still remember it was, it was me, uh, Timberte, Jabbar Jaluk. Wow. Yeah, at our, at our at our first lunch, right. So uh, we had we had some good guys on that at that first staff. But he said, hey, you, you want to uh, where you want to recruit? I might give everybody a piece of state. I said, where where you want me? He said, well, how about we put you in Baton Rouge? I said, what well, sounds good to me. So, you know, I I never been I'd never been to Baton Rouge. Never been to New Orleans. Never been to I think that was my first time in Louisiana when I actually stepped wow. foot. So, um, but I think, you know, just as I look back, it was a testament to the coaches. The coaches, they embraced, the high school coaches embraced me. I mean, they were, they were awesome. Um, I just went in and tried to develop relationships. That was the goal is, is um, because uh, that's what it starts with. Like Louisiana is such a, such a community. You know, I was, I was, I was leaving Tampa and, and coming to Ruston, Louisiana. I was like, oh, oh. You're leaving Tampa. Are you? Are you going to be upset? That's, I got to Ruston, and and after a couple of weeks, I was like, no, no. I mean, it's. I missed uh, where, where I grew up. Uh, we had a we had a tight knit community, you know, with relationships sure. and and people mattered, and um, I missed that. And I found that back in in Ruston. I found that back in Louisiana overall, and and I think that that helped me in terms of recruiting. That that was um, that's how the guys embraced uh, me down here. That's that's what they want you know they want to know that uh, people are going to take care of their uh, their players when they when they you know leave high school and go on to college and and I think that's hopefully what I was able to show them you know is that that we were going to do that and you know with Jay I I go all the way back to Stan Hagen watched him and said hey hey Joe we, we need to go get this guy or whatever and I I went and saw uh, Rob Odom over at, absolutely at West Feliciana yeah. and and she Rob was in the back you know back there in the uh uh in the field house and all that good stuff and it kind of took off from there and and jay was fun to recruit there, there's no doubt about that and it came down to his mom it was his mom dad and and jazz obviously was a year younger mm -hmm. and but jay uh we, we were able to hold off missouri late jay they 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 messed with me i was at a high school basketball game at walker and they his mom called me and said hey i think we're gonna go to missouri <laughs> and i like run out of the game and i'm like <laughs> sprinting on the phone like 
talking to him like, no, 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 that's a terrible idea. I think it's, I don't know what you're thinking, you know. She said, I'm just kidding. We're going to come. <laughs> okay, thanks. Recruiting Good. is a brutal game, huh? It's yeah. Brutal. Man. Yeah, it's, it's kind of wild, but it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of wild. It's fun. But it's, it's definitely fun when you have, um, when you got a great place and when you find fit. Like, hey, this guy, this, this guy in high school, he fits. Mm-hmm. He fits our culture. He fits our team. Um, uh, he fits our community. And when you know that, it's easy because then you're talking to you're talking to parents, you're talking to high school coaches, you're talking to players about, hey, this is a great place for you. You can get all your goals and dreams accomplished, and when you can show them that path, and when and when that's the stuff you get to talk about, it's it's fun. Do you wish you had another year with this cycle, the cycle of of this class? I know you can't speak specifically about this class as far as individuals, but when you look at it, it's very talented at the quarterback position in this recruiting cycle. Um, how difficult was it to hit the ground at that portion of the cycle? And what, what do you make of, of, of this cycle as a whole? I know you can't speak individually on them. Yeah, so, I mean, I think in, well, quarterback recruiting starts, you know, when, when guys are young. Uh-huh. Um, so f- there were some guys that I had some relationships with um, and then some guys that I just were creating relationships with. Mm-hmm. Um, but, no, I mean, I think you always look and say, hey, we're uh i feel i feel great about where we're at i feel great about where we're at at, at uh um as an lsu football team and how we are in, in uh at that position in that room so no i'm 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 excited about about where we are and 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 continue to move forward i i mean it's a it's an honor and a privilege to play quarterback at lsu i mean it's uh to to represent lsu football and 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 lead this team into tiger stadium that's a that's a privilege and and we are We'll continue to put guys into that room who understand uh, what that means, um, who understand how important that is, and who understand what kind of what kind of opportunity they have to develop here and to and to be the best version of themselves um, and have an opportunity to go win national championships. How different evaluating that position has it become over the last couple of years? The skill has changed at that spot, right? Yeah, I think it, well, and, and I think it depends too what what you're doing on offense and yeah. what and what you want to highlight. I mean, um, that's where I, I think I think Mike Denbrock uh, just really understands what he wants, and he's a he's a great evaluator of understanding. Uh, hey, hey, this guy really fits, and this guy, you know, different things. And hey, do you see this? Do you see that? Um, he and Coach Kelly both. Um, so, I think mostly it's about understanding um, who fits you. Um, and then who who you can who can develop within your system and within the things that we have um, in our building and in our program, um, and I think that's that's the most important thing is to understand that fully. So then and then understand that you know and really know the the young man that you're recruiting so that you know that those th- two things really work together. Yeah. Um, we have some we have some special people in our building yeah. in terms of uh, who who help in terms of our quarterback development, um, and and that's what. That's what I've been very fortunate of is, and, and tried to be aware of walking in is getting to know all the, all the people that we have um, in the building and getting to see all the different, whether it be um, facilities that we get an opportunity to use um, or experts in their field that we get an opportunity to use and how can they help our guys develop into being the absolute best they can be. Uh, that's, that's been kind of my thing is, is making sure that I'm aware of that and then putting that into action. Jamar Cain says that people see him on the road and they tell him, you're in the right spot. You're in a great gig, defensive line coach at LSU. Within the coaching fraternity, and I asked Coach Cain this, and, and you can speak to this, the LSU job has to be looked at as one that's either envied to be there because of the expectation, but then once you get there, the, uh, the, the pressure of it, I guess, of, of, of to win uh, exists. H- how is LSU's job viewed from the coaching fraternity? And now that you're, you're in the belly of the beast, uh, a program that's won three national championships in 20 years under three head coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, what is kind of the the expectation of it? It's the best job in America. It's it's it, this is this is the best place in America to play college football to coach college football, um, and and I think you can feel that in the passion. You can feel it every day. Uh, you know, Louisiana is a is a unique place um, in this country. It has a unique culture. The the community. Um, that we are as a state is special, uh, and I think that's what people talk about. You know, the, the, yeah, we talk about um, the talent here matters, right? It it, uh, it absolutely does because you have to have um, local talent in order to be a successful college football program consistently year in year out. But I think too, you have to have um, you have to have 
a group of people in a community that 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 cares deeply about success um, and and putting our guys in that position uh, year in and year out. And we have that here um, t- to go along with with the Louisiana culture and and the community where they're going to wrap their arms around our guys and wrap their arms around this staff and this football program. Uh, and help and help push us forward continually, and that's that's what makes this job special. Every single day you walk in, mm-hmm. right, is is the expectations, the standards, but then also the community, um, the community here in Baton Rouge, uh, the community on the LSU campus, and the community in Louisiana overall. What was it like having Tyron Matthew in that building address the team? It seems like all the players that come through here, it was a very powerful moment for the the program. Uh, you know, I, I told I actually I actually told somebody the other day so. Uh, the other day, uh, Chris Johnson, who who played at East Carolina when I was there, mm-hmm. he, he he walks his two young kids over. <laughs> He's got two twin boys. They're like nine. I'm sure they're they, no good. <laughs> they, they, they're probably slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so they co- he comes walking. Three K and four K. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's so he comes walking across. But I said, uh, so I just popped over there and we we visited for a while and, and kind of hung out a little bit that day. But I was telling him about Tyrant, and I was telling him about him coming and and speaking um just his his presence and obviously you hear a lot of stuff you get an opportunity to see him on tv and his interviews and obviously he's a powerful uh impactful guy but i think seeing it in person i mean we you know i stand up in front of a group of quarterbacks every day you know a a ton right um so i'm used to to getting up in front of people and speaking well, usually you have you have certain things you want to talk about. You have a whether it be a presentation or you got a, an outline. You got different things. When he stood up in front of our team for I believe it was near an hour mm-hmm. and and spoke from the heart passionately, the way he would the 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 message that he sent um, from beginning to end, the 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 organized message that he wanted to get across to that team and how he was able to get that across. Um, in that room during that time, it, it was a it was a powerful moment. Mm-hmm. It was a powerful moment, and I think for a lot of the guys that we have um, on the roster, they know who he is. They they've been around him, but the opportunity to truly hear that, and then for other guys, um, for other guys on the team, may or for that are new, or for even staff that's new, um, for all of us to hear that and his pride and and what LSU means to him yeah. and and what he thinks what he believes it takes to be successful um based on uh you know his history and and his past and what he knows works day in day out and the type of work that it takes it, it was uh, it was no doubt it was a special moment yeah it feels like a college program has two head coaches the head coach on the field Brian Kelly but then they go to the strength coach for the off season and really under under his they're monitoring what goes on with the team kind of building up to what they want him to look like how have you uh, – what has your impression been of, of, of Coach Flint? Yeah, Jake's, Jake is uh, – Jake's big time now. Jake – and Jake and Coach Kelly, again, you know, not to not to sound like whatever, but going alignment. back to the word alignment. alignment. See, look yeah, at you. Yeah, you know, yeah. still, I'm studying. Uh, Everybody. Uh, right there. Right Everybody, there. Yeah. Top of yeah. mind. Finishing sentences now. <laughs> look right, at us. Right. right? It's uh, me and you. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but they are – Jake understands um, the message um, and the consistent message that that what Coach Kelly is, wants to continue to push to our team, um, and they they work together so well from that standpoint, from a uh, how we're going to grow the team mentally and emotionally, um, but also then the the science behind how to prepare uh, guys and, and tracking things uh, specifically in terms of explosion movement. Um, in terms of just distance of running or workload, um, and consistently monitoring those things so that we aren't guessing that it, that it's a uh, it's something we know exactly what's being done and how we're preparing, mm-hmm. right? And and being able to use the different great facilities that we have at LSU and the things that we have uh, you know in front of us and be able to put those into work so that we can put our guys in the best uh, position to be successful. And that's that's uh, it's it's been awesome to watch. I've I've never seen some of the stuff that we're able to use and and. Some of the technology that we're, we put to work every single day, and Jake and Jake does, it, it's it's fascinating stuff. So it's it's definitely been fun. So cool to get you in here, man. Thank you for your time this morning. That's thirty minutes with LSU quarterbacks coach Joe Sloan. He's got to get over to uh, to meetings today. I know camps are going on. How important is the camp process to the evaluation of what you guys do? Camp is uh, camp's critical. It's it's a 
Um, it's an opportunity for guys to come out and compete at LSU uh, and uh, and on our you know on our campus, and for us to get a chance to work with those guys. Plus, they get a chance to work with us. Yeah, they hear how we coach. They hear yeah. how uh, you know what type of what type of people we are. Um, it's hard to fake it for you know three four hours out on a field, right? So they get that opportunity. I think that's huge. Um, but from every age, from you know ninth graders up through twelfth graders, uh, you know we're, we are going to we're going to put a flag and we're going to put a wall up around Louisiana. And, and that's going to start, right? That's going to start year in, year out in the summer and getting guys on campus and working with them from when they're, when they're young all the way up to uh, the end of their recruiting process. So yeah, it's, it's an opportunity to evaluate. And it's also an opportunity for us to show off this unbelievable place that we have. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and the coaching staff that we have and the energy that we have out there um, and for them to understand what it's going to be like, uh, when they come to be an LSU Tiger. Uh, do you think that Denbrock, House, Poli, and Kelly have any idea what that, that is going to look like um, Labor Day weekend in New Orleans on a Sunday night playing primetime in the Dome? I mean, I, I think they probably <laughs> can guess. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, – yeah, people get. I guess we have seven home games. Really, that's really eight, right? right. That's mm-hmm. really eight. Yeah. yeah. So it's. Uh, I'm excited about the environment. Mm-hmm. I've um, I've had the opportunity to to uh, you know, obviously be in the dome a few different times, and and uh, it's it will definitely be. We'll paint that thing out purple. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be wild. It's uh, purple and gold. It'll be it'll be littered through there. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna we'll take over the city that that weekend. Uh, thank you, man. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. Great to see you. Yep. Really appreciate it, Jordy. Thank yeah. you so much, and, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Joe Sloan, LSU quarterbacks coach, uh, 30 minutes with uh, with Coach digging into uh, the depth of the offense and the expectation here in the offseason. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. True blue water, true hydration at its finest. Right now, you're only a few minutes away from getting your five-gallon water delivered to you, just like we are over here at the UDL. All you got to do is log on to truebluewater.com. That's T R U bluewater.com the website's fantastic over at truebluewater.com you can get your service and find out how quick it is you can schedule a delivery even hop on the billing system right there at truebluewater.com t-r-u bluewater.com the journey colada show is brought to you by a bears lawn maintenance commercial or residential a bears lawn maintenance is ready to work a bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A-Bears Lawn Maintenance.
Do you have questions about your finances? Are you looking for recommendations from a skilled financial advisor? Get in touch with our friend Daniel Newman over at Edward Jones. You can find him easily by logging online and shooting him an email at daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. That is daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. Whether it is help with your 401k or just fiscal advice heading into the new season, get in touch with Daniel today. Best way to do it, email him, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. He's our experienced financial advisor. Let him be yours, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live here on this Wednesday. Appreciate Coach uh, Coach Joe Sloan stopping in here in the studios. We're going to talk to Representative John Stefanski here in a couple of minutes about the latest on NIL and legislation, of what's going on with the state of Louisiana. We're going to talk New Orleans Saints with Nick Underhill coming up here at 8.30 this morning. So lots of guests, slow news time right now, as uh, not a lot of popping on uh, on the news scene obviously nba finals coming down the stretch it is mailbag to the boston yes it is mailbag wednesday so help us do our job please hashtag mailbag hashtag mailbag inside of the uh of the chat app if you want to uh, ask any questions uh getting uh get inside of the chat and we will have them uh, asked and answered here uh, on the Jordy Collada show. Uh, Louis Caro, I hope Noah Kane shows up big time. He is, uh, I believe that uh, Noah Kane is on campus Ooh. after he uh, was tightening up some stuff from an academic standpoint up at Penn State during the second half, second semester of the uh, of the year. Um, we were, uh, I believe Noah Kane is now on campus and hoping to get uh, Noah Kane into the studio at some point over the next, uh, next week. Uh, so we will... Uh, How much do you think that sets him back at all if it, if any uh at the running back position i don't think any i think the, the the running back spot is is such a rotational position that you need bodies and you need new uh and fresh legs all the time and i think a player like of kane's caliber can take a lot of pressure off of a guy like john emory he can come in and spell him um along with armani goodwin i think that they've got good depth in that room like i said i, I think that frank wilson made that room nfl ready immediately when he got there i think of the addition of noah kane getting john emory really kind of on you know on, on the same page as the program and getting him locked and bought in to to his final year of college football was huge for that room obviously armani goodwin being healthy will be big for lsu at that position but i think that they've got you know i mean they, they've got depth and they've got you uh, have depth, but if you don't bring in Noah Kane, you really don't have anybody that's played the position for LSU, right. really. Like, you'd be very green in that room because I know John Emery's been here for a minute, but he hadn't played. Like, he, we were talking about it before the show. Like, how many snaps do you think he's actually played for LSU? What, what I think we came up with, like, close to, I think it's like 90. I think it's the number that he's actually been on the field for. That's and that's not even, yeah, and he's been here for three years. And so if you don't bring in a guy like Noah Kane, who start, I would say started for two years at Penn State, like, at least you have somebody that, when the, whenever he hits the field, the lights aren't bright. You have somebody that you can rely on a little bit and then let John Emery get his feet wet. Because once he gets going, Coach, oh, I think man. he's going to be yeah. a game-breaker because you saw him show up in the shape that he was in. He totally transformed his body, and I think he's ready to kind of take the lead of what could be like an SEC back, like an every-down SEC back, and then hit that with Noah Kane, and then you have Armani Goodwin who's a game-breaker. I think they got they got some studs back there. No, that I'm telling you, you haven't I mean, seen yet. Uh, we we mentioned it. I, I, every every radio hit, every uh, interview I do concerning LSU football. When people ask me about a um, a breakout player for 2022, I I mean it's I always go John Emery because I believe Emery is. I know that you know here locally people have had expectation for him and feel like he's missed his breakout. But really, this is the first time that he has been in such a 
really good place mentally and physically at the same time. I think that they just haven't been and opportunity. I mean, he's he's been physically right, but when he was physically right, he wasn't mentally right. When he was mentally right, he wasn't physically right. Now he's physically and mentally right, and he's ready, in my opinion, to bust out. I mean, I think that he can 114 be, career carries. Wow, that's, that's more it. than I thought. Yeah, more than I thought too. I mean, 75 in 2020. Okay, uh, that was the bulk of it. Yeah, 39 in 2019, and flashes in 2020 of greatness. Mm-hmm. What Pull, was it? The, pulling away from the Bama defensive yeah. backfield, and then that Vanderbilt game alone. Where yeah. I mean, he looked like a video game that day. Uh, all right, uh, Representative John Stefanski is in the house. We will talk to him uh, in mere seconds here about the latest on name, image, and likeness legislation that just happened up at the Capitol. Uh, we will also get the latest on what happened during the session. We heard Senator Rick Ward come through here last week and really spell out what was next as far as the the bridge into Baton Rouge goes. Uh, Stefanski's always been helpful with stuff like that, so we'll ask him some of the things that's been going on from a political standpoint and get his thoughts on all-season LSU football and New Orleans Pelicans. As always, uh, we can dive into some sports topics with our guy, Captain America, as he'll stop by next year on the Jordy Colada Show. Remember, Daily, we're brought to you by Fresh Chef Kitchen, our friends over at Fresh Chef Kitchen. Uh, they've got meals made every single day. They can pre-make your meals for you weekly, just like they do for us over here at FM Digital Media. they got a coupon uh, coupon code right now that can save you over at FreshChefEats.com, FreshChefEats.com. Uh, Jordy10 is the uh, is the coupon code. Uh, type that Jordy10 uh, discount code into when you check out, and you'll save yourself some money over there at Fresh Chef Eats. But remember, uh, Fresh healthy meals prepared every week they drop them off here at the studio the convenience is the best part right everybody coming in and out working here at the studio throughout the day they've got breakfast lunch dinner ideas and um uh and and plates made inside the refrigerator pre-made for us over at fresh chef kitchen everything is fresh Everything has passion and love behind it. It's all healthy meals. Get out in front of it. If you don't have the time to keep yourself uh, nutritionally fit throughout the week, get in touch with Fresh Chef Kitchen as they can take that off your plate for you uh, very easily. Uh, And it's very easy to do online, freshcheffeats.com. All right, our friend, John Stefanski, Representative John Stefanski, next here on the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go uh, Go Chevrolet. There he is. No suit. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Colada Show is brought to you daily by Morales Roloffs. Morales Roloffs provides dumpster rentals for residential and commercial needs in Baton Rouge and surrounding areas. Morales has roll-off dumpsters ranging from 10 yards to 40 yards to accommodate all of your disposal needs. Search online moralesrolloffs.com. Looking to book a dumpster but no idea how? We've made it quick and easy for you. Check out our website at moralesrolloffs.com. Let Morales Roloffs know your desired delivery date and finally, provide your contact details. To make payment, look out for an email invoice with all your booking details. On delivery day, our driver will notify you through text and email that your dumpster is ready and on the way. Now you know how easy and convenient it is. Call Morales Roloffs at 225-427-0000 for your dumpster.
All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Good stuff from Joe Sloan, LSU quarterbacks coach. Appreciate him for stopping by here on this Wednesday morning. Remember, if you missed it, it's brought back to you by RMB Builders. From the LSU quarterbacks coach to our guy out of District 42, our representative, John Stefanski, who is up there. Of course, he is the head of redistricting. They're going into a special session today, so lots to get to with Captain America as he is in the studio with us here on this uh, Wednesday morning. It's great to see you, bro. Yeah, you as well. No suit. I love it. No suit. Uh, a little, yes. little more casual. Um, you know, got got to got to put on a polo and 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 relax a little bit. But I got to throw one on in, in just a little while. Yes, right. <laughs> Not for realize, long. Yeah, I didn't realize y'all had y'all, y'all had Sloan in here earlier. That's a he's a good dude. Great dude. Uh, really Great good dude. guy. You know, so I have some very close friends in Ruston. Sure. Uh, own a own a restaurant, kind of bar up there. That's that's really successful. And and uh, so knew him from my time going back and forth. And so kind of cool that yeah. he ended up at LSU. And and there's a saying that you got sloaned. Okay, no, I'm, I'm not joking. Yeah, all right. And it's good. It's a good thing. Okay. It's all right. No, no, don't think it's that. It's a good thing. Jennifer but, loves know, that one. My, my, high school, my high school buddies, coaches, uh, said he, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll just get you, like, as a, as a recruit, you know? And, wow. like, the recruits will say that. Like, wow. you know, hey, why did you end up at Tech? You know? And it, it's like, Sloan, you know, man, you know? And, and uh, so he's, I, I think, with the resources LSU has, yes. I mean, you got to imagine he's he's going to be a, a force on the recruiting trail as well. He spoke about that. You could sense that with yeah. that behind his name now. We're not in feels, Kansas anymore. He feels pretty yeah. powerful. <laughs> um, but but it, it, and this is something that we talked about with R- uh, Senator Rick Ward, who was here last week, was the relationship of LSU up on Capitol Hill with you yeah. guys, with, with everybody up there, with the, with the legislators. And not to bang on anybody in the past, but it seems like it's much more firm now. You can, you can speak directly to that I know. Yeah, no, it's it's gotten better, and I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what caused that. You know, I can speculate, uh, but there, when I first got there to the Capitol, LSU really there were some there were some kind of awkward moments. You know, I had there were a lot of people when they renamed the library that were that were upset that maybe you know the legislature didn't have some say so. You know, I that that wasn't a huge issue to me. I know it was to some people, but there were some incidents that like. I saw there was a separation between LSU and, and uh, the legislature. And I think over these past two years, definitely, really this last term, we've saw tremendous strides. You know, uh, uh, Scott Woodward has been very present around the Capitol and, and, and around issues. Uh, some other members, uh, you know, Verge has been around a lot and, and, and really making relationships. And then President Tate has really been around and, and coming to events and, and trying to build those relationships with the, uh, with the legislators. And so I, I think it's, it's been great, and I think you've seen the university benefit. Sure. I, think, I think you've seen legislators who are interested in making sure that LSU can be successful. You've seen additional funding going towards the school. Uh, you, I think you're going to see some additional funding going towards helping maybe build some new facilities mm-hmm. from the athletic standpoint. Uh, which which maybe there really isn't a precedent for, and so okay. uh, those those relationships are are already paying dividends. And and look, there's so many people at the legislature who graduated from LSU. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it really yeah. is probably you know it's probably half the group. And, and so I mean, who doesn't want to support their alma mater? You just have to know you have to know what the needs are, and and then you have to know who to be able to talk to. Yeah. And uh, so so it's it, the rela- the relationship has gotten progressively better, and, and I think it's only going to get better with that leadership team they have in place right now. Uh, another topic that the senator touched on that I know was dear to his heart, being that he was right there from West Baton Rouge, was the bridge. You yep. and I talked about that the last time you were here, that you really thought that it was moving in a positive direction. The finances were being put in the right spot, but it still was going to take time. Now, now that the session has finalized, where, where do you kind of lay on, on what the, the future looks for that? I think it's great. I think, look, it's it's no secret, like we've talked about before, everyone wants to build a new bridge. Or everyone wants, let's say this, everyone help, wants the traffic problem in Baton Rouge to alleviate, okay? Number of solutions on how you can do that. Uh, most of that has galvanized around a new bridge. And, and you know, they just finalized, they picked three sites uh, that are the final three. Last time we talked about how frustrating it was that they didn't even have a location picked right. out yet, you know, right. after all these years. So they finally picked out a site. They have the last three. Um, and so, and we parked, I think, about three, $350 million basically in an account saying, 
this can be used as a down payment. We also have gone through great strides to, to find new revenue sources for our infrastructure here in Louisiana. And, uh, and in fact, we, we're, other states, all these other states take a portion of your vehicle sales tax. We weren't doing that here in Louisiana. So now the, the vast majority of your vehicle sales tax is going towards road and infrastructure. Uh, and, and they passed a, a new fee this year on electric vehicles. You know, electric vehicles weren't paying anything for the roads. Uh, most other states have some type of at least fee you pay to help, help pay for the roads that you drive on because what funds our roads is the gas tax primarily. Well, if you're not buying gas, you know, you're, you're not, you're yeah. not, you're driving on the roads for free basically. Right. And so we've, we've made strides to try to help, uh, fund our infrastructure a lot better. And really what this last session was about was infrastructure. I mean, the amount of money we spent on water systems around the state on, on real, on road and pavement and, and other types of just, you know, brick and mortar things w was really great and very mm -hmm. much needed in our state. So we, we tried to maximize all those dollars and all the surplus dollars that were coming down for infrastructure. And I think you can, you're can you going to be able to see that over the next 10 years. Wide open statement, and I know different sides have different answers to it, but all in all, the legislative session from your point of view, success? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, it's it's easy when you got a bunch of money. And we had a bunch <laughs> of money this year. It is, you know I mean? It just is. It, it, it was... It, some you know I was around when when we had these tremendous deficits, two billion dollar deficits. You come into a year like this where you have these big surpluses. Yeah, it's it's easy. You get to fund all these great things that that you think are going to help. Things like early childhood education, higher education, uh, you know, roads and bridges, like we talked about. So uh, absolutely, when you have money, when you have money, the conversation is a little bit easier. Um, when when you don't have money, it's it's a lot tougher. You have to pick winners and losers. So so yes, I think it was a success. Overall, um, I, I think everybody took a very um, mature approach to a lot of this one-time money that we may not have next year, spending it on, on things that are, are one-time and going to really benefit the entire state. Yeah, Representative John Stefanski in with us here. He is in Baton Rouge. He was back at his home in Crowley, uh, obviously catching up on his, his personal work, his day job, uh, but now back here for a special legislative session that is going to take place today centered around redistricting. This is something that you have been in charge of over the last couple of years, and now as you come down the stretch, what is what is the focus today? Uh, uh, back again. So yeah. I had about what a, a week break. You know, I, I went to I went to sleep Friday night, um, thinking we were we were good on redistricting at least for a while, and then Sunday afternoon, an appellate court basically said, "No, y'all need." We agree with a lower court judge that we're not going to stop her order because she ordered us. It went, and it's a long timeline. I can run through relatively quick, but. Basically, on Sunday night, we got the news that no, we we're going to have to go back in and attempt to try to maybe redraw Congress. And basically, what happened is we got sued after we passed the congressional map. Um, that went to a federal district court. Uh, that district court judge granted what's called a preliminary injunction, basically saying, since this election, this congressional election qualifying is on July 20th, since this election is so close, um, I, we are not going to allow you to use the map that you passed. Uh, because we don't think we think it violates. She thinks it violates federal law. Hmm. Uh, that got appealed to the appellate court. The appellate court said no. We're not going to do that. And so everybody was kind of like, okay. Well, the appellate court said no. It looks like we won't have to go. Well, then all of a sudden on Sunday night, the appellate court kind of changed their mind. Oh wow. Yeah, and and said no. Does in that fact, happen? it happens. It happens. You know, this is this is a, an evolving process. I, I think most people. Most people who, who understand redistricting understood that our congressional map was probably always destined to have a court kind of look over it uh -huh. and tell us what was going to happen. And the reason for that is is because redistricting means something different to everyone, especially congressional redistricting. If you're in northeast Louisiana, northwest Louisiana, southwest Louisiana, uh, whether you come from a, a rural background, a, a, a large city background, whether you're white, black, you mm -hmm. know, Asian, regardless of, of, of your background and where you come from, redistricting should mean something different uh, to you or does mean something different to you. And so it was just very hard to find something that, that satisfied everyone. And, and ultimately, that's what leads us here today. The governor called us in for a special session. It's a, it starts today and ends on Monday. And so... Uh, you know, we'll go in there. I'm going to, you know, I've, I've had a number of conversations with my colleagues about what they want to do. Uh, and, and do we want to go in there and, and come, the judge has basically said, go redraw another map that oh has God. two black uh, congressional districts. You know, th that's your order. It literally just says that. Go draw a, a map that, that 
uh, has two black districts. And so, you know, how did we get here? We, we passed a map that the governor vetoed, and then we came in and overrode his veto. And it's extremely hard to do that. It's only happened four times in the wow. history of Louisiana. Yeah. And so the, the legislature has been very clear about what they want the congressional map to look like. A judge has told us that we can't do that. And so now we have to go back to the legislature and see what the appetite is. Yeah. But it, it, it's one, one thing I want to highlight. This, this is not a final judgment. And the only reason we're in the position we are here today is because congressional qualifying is right around the corner. And, and we have to make sure that the map that's used in that election checks all the boxes. Wow. And so since there's such an urgency with So you're that, on a time crunch. We are on a tremendous time crunch. And really, that's why we're here today. If we had a whole nother year, yeah. this would get fully litigated. There wouldn't be injunctions and stays and all these things. We would have a full trial on the merits about, about these maps and go from there. But unfortunately, we, are, we don't have the luxury of that amount of time. And so we've had to make some quick decisions. Does this bring back the full body? Oh, yeah. Everybody's here. Wow. Yeah. Begrudgingly, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> there's not many happy people. <laughs> it's not. I mean, we've been literally we finished up what I, mean, I, I, I think people it was, were sprinting to the parking lot last June week. June the 7th. <laughs> you know, we just we just got done last uh, Monday afternoon. So you're still at the cleaners. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, you laugh. Hey, let me tell you, you want, some, you want a real life story? I went to go grab shirts yesterday when I was heading over here and I was like, I don't have any clean shirts. Right. I had to bring dirty shirts here <laughs> to clean here just so I can. I mean, that's that's just. Re, that's just real life stuff and and so but look this is very important work I'm, I'm taking both the judges order very seriously you know as, as chairman of that committee and as, as part of the leadership in the house and uh, and so look but ultimately at the end of the day if you don't have the votes if you don't have yeah. 53 people who want to do something differently I can't force members to do anything uh, regardless of a judge's order regardless of, of um, what what maybe other people want us to do uh, I, I'm, it's it's a legislative body, and there's 105 of us on the House side. You so know? you're about to be looking at late nights. I think so. I mean, look, and, and that's an, let, let's talk about another thing. You know, I, I'd like to bring up the little video that we all saw when we were in, in grade school: how a bill becomes a law. You know, <laughs> it takes longer than five days. No doubt. Okay, especially right. something this controversial. And so, I mean, the reality of us being able to accomplish this in the in the tiny amount of time they have given us is is pretty much impossible mm -hmm. it just is I mean we're, we're gonna try I think we're gonna give a good faith effort to, to have debate and, and look at some some different options but I mean you, you can't give the, a bill that we worked on for over a year you know spent 21 days in a special session debating overrode the governor on five days to try to accomplish this I mm -hmm. mean it, it's it's they really put us in a position that there's I really don't think they gave us any chance of success, in no. my opinion. No. And so we're working through that. I'm back. I'm back in Baton Rouge. <laughs> right. you know, I, I, I texted some right. friends last night. I said, you want to grab some dinner? Uh, and, and they were laughing. Like, what are you doing in town? I said, oh, you haven't been reading the news. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm back. You know. Right. And so here I am. Here we are again. Um, one thing that seemed like it was unanimous on both sides was NIL. And it hit the governor's desk, I know, over the weekend. It was signed off on. And yeah. That was, that was pretty easy. Right? It, it was. Although, I'll tell you, in the House, we had some pretty rigorous debate. Um, you know, we one of the elements that you and I didn't talk a ton about, we talked a ton about the university being able to participate. Sure. And how important that was, especially when you have other states that have no rules. And so, that was something that I think most people said, okay, that makes sense. We had another element to where we're trying to protect those contracts, okay? And we're trying to say that not just anybody can submit a public records request and get the contract between a business and that student athlete. And that, that spurred a lot of debate and conversation. And so two ways, you know, I had, I saw it from a position of if, if I can go look, at, if I'm at Al I always like to, like to use Alabama, you know, because that's our, that's our big football rival. But if I'm at Alabama and I get to, I can just submit a public records request and get every one of our star athletes, athletes contracts, so wow. I know exactly what they're making. You know, you could use that as sure. a competitive advantage to induce, especially with the transfer portal, portal and the rules that we have. And so, you know, I saw that as that's a way that you know, if the university is going to participate, number one. Why you know is your is your contract public record? You know it shouldn't be. Is my is right. a lot is my private stuff public record? It shouldn't be. And so we're, we're all of a sudden saying that these student athletes, just because they're a member of the university, you know, should they have those, those NIL contracts be available to everybody? So there's a conversation to be had there. There's a competitive conversation to be had. But then on the on the flip side, I had some of my colleagues go, well, if this is all about the athlete, which is which is what it's been pitched as. 
why wouldn't we want all the athletes to know what each other are making? Hmm. To, to be able to make the market maybe set grow. Set a scale. Yeah, set a scale, make the market grow. And if an athlete can get more money at Alabama, maybe he should go over there. Oh, wow. You know? and, and so we had those conversations, and, and we had that, that debate. Uh, and then we also had the debate about you know, Jimbo and Nick Saban's yeah. you know, sure. conversation about, you know, is it cheating? Are they using this to induce recruitment? You know? So we had a pretty vigorous debate on the House side. The Senate side, I think, I think Rick had a different impression of it because you know, the Senate, they... they the Senate's just handled differently the House. The House is, is literally like a mob at times. <laughs> right, and, and the right. Senate is a lot more uh, professional and cordial at times to where they, if it's a Senate bill, which this was, they, they treat their senators a little bit different. So a little bit easier conversation on the Senate side than the House. But we had some really good debate and, and, and brought up some, some points that, that maybe I hadn't thought of. But I think overall what we passed, um, we, it, that it, it ended up passing mm-hmm. to where – you can't just go in and get those contracts that the athletes are signing. And then additionally, we have the ability for the university to be able to participate now. And I think it's really going to benefit the athletes. I think it's going to definitely benefit LSU as a program and our other colleges. Because, you know, we're thinking big here at LSU. But, I mean, if there's a star, let, let's talk about Sloan's old place at Tech. Mm-hmm. If there's a star at Tech and they have a local auto dealer over there who wants to be able to, hey, we need to keep this kid so he doesn't jump to a bigger program. You know, it, it allows them to be able to participate, and the university can maybe go to that that local business and say, "Hey, can we get him? Can you get involved? We really want to be able to keep this guy here at, at Tech because he's a star." You know? Yeah, absolutely. Would, I'm sorry. Would the like with the university being involved create any more? Is there a downside to it where it creates some red tape where there was a, there was an opportunity for deals to get done? Now, now the university is involved and like, wait, I don't know if we should be doing like business with this sort of, you know, almost being able to kibosh deals because of yeah. who you're involved with. Well, I'll tell you, they, they already had that. So under Louisiana's law, you, you can't sign a deal with someone that basically goes against the, the university's maybe platform is a good way to say it. And so that that already exists. The university kind of has final veto say. And, and I mean, look, there, there's some entities that just don't really fit with what with the university yeah, the, the okay alignment. the alignment okay <laughs> and y'all can speculate on what those are and and so that exists already but i i really the way talking to lsu and talking to the universities i don't see it that way i really see it as it is going to only benefit it's it's going to be able to you have an athlete who comes to school all right and and he's he's hearing about all this nil stuff and but he can't go to anybody at the university and go how do i even do this right. like how would i how would i even go about finding a partner now all of a sudden the university i imagine they're going to set up a staff person maybe multiple to where go to them they'll see if they can find you a partner yeah, this set is, up tears yeah for, what's your absolutely. interest yeah, right what's yeah, your interest yeah, what do you want to read you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, i don't have a car that's my interest <laughs> yeah. and 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 i'm tired of living in the dorm right. uh, those are those are my interests welcome but to my world i, I really yeah <laughs> same <laughs> I see that I see that as, as the way it works. It, it, they're really, I think, going to only benefit. And and again, with this transfer portal, I mean, it's it's free agency yeah, every year. And and universities, ha- I mean, they're obviously have an interest in keeping these guys on campus and, and making sure they stay. And this is this for like it or not, think it's good for the sport or not. It's this, here. It's where yeah. we are. It's here. It's where we are. And and we need to be able to compete. And and I'll continue to say that I'm I'm. You know, at the end of the day, I've had some tough conversations like we've talked about in the past with NIL and, and citizens of the state. But at the end of the day, we want our universities to be successful. We love our sports here in Louisiana. We're passionate about them. Um, and, and if you want to have success on the football field, you have to evolve and you have to be able to compete. And this is just part of it. Is the formation or the regulation of a collective discussed at your level, at the political level? Or is that... More... Uh, uh, not not in depth, you know, sure. but but yes, we have... I've, I've asked those questions about how how is this going to work? Mm-hmm. Like, functionally, how does this work? Right. Because what everybody assumes is that TAF, they're going to take all the TAF guys, they're going to set up this big fund, right. and the fund is just going to pay for all the athletes. That's what everyone is assuming there because they saw some things like it at A&M happen that way. Texas uh, happened that way. We saw a big article about the collective. Like, yeah. Remember they were paying every lineman mm-hmm. $50,000 right. or something like that. Right. But I, that is not my understanding. My understanding is really more of a, of a let's from a, a pure university level. Let's let's help guide some of these players into deals that make sense in sure. into natural partners. And then look, but at the same time, okay, you know, re- removing some of that booster language, 
allows the people who have really been invested in our university for a long time to be able to participate too, you know, because mm -hmm. just because I donate to the university, now I can't have an agreement with an right. athlete. Does that really make sense? Sure. That doesn't make much sense. Right. So, and if I'm giving to TAF, I get points back. If I'm giving here, do I get any Do benefit? I get the points? Right. Is right. there the right. benefit? Right. You know, I, who's, yeah, how, how is it, does this go towards my money I have to pay for that suite? Sure. I always sure. hear that, you know, <laughs> well, the suite's not that expensive, but man, you know, that donation sucks. Right. Right. <laughs> and I hear that all the time. And so, yeah, I, I see it as a benefit. Obviously, you know, um, we, we again, it, it's about competition. It's about the it's a it's competition and the athlete. And I think we found something that's going to work. And and I think it's going to be great for all of our universities, but especially for LSU. Uh, Captain America, glad he's on our side. Representative <laughs> John Stefanski going to do the uh, the people's work today up at the uh, at the Capitol is uh, redistricting is happening. Special session happening. They just wrapped up the uh, the legislative session uh, a week uh, last week. Uh, and now uh, back in Baton Rouge uh, doing more of it. It's great to see you. Good seeing you again. Uh, and yeah. uh, we will talk again soon Absolutely. as uh, we will talk to our, our guy, Captain America, Representative John Stefanski out of Crowley, uh, stopping in back in Baton Rouge with us here uh, on his way up to the Capitol. We come back, we'll talk New Orleans Saints. Tyron Matthew, Jarvis Landry, all of them in black and gold. Mandatory mini camp happening down in New Orleans. Nick Underhill will be back with us here when we come back on the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Love it. Appreciate it, guys. All right, let's get back to it. Our guy, Nick Underhill, down in New Orleans. New Orleans.football, as we said, the uh, the authority for New Orleans Saints coverage. Uh, you've even heard a lot of the people that even cover New Orleans Saints football. I love it. Even recognize uh, Underhill and the work that he's doing. Yeah, right. I mean, they're like, we don't have the information like Nick does, but I mean, like, I mean, we saw the things out there. Uh, Nick Underhill from New Orleans.football. Make, make sure you are subscribed to the site. Uh, make sure you're listening to the podcast right now. A lot of cool stuff coming out, including football pornography. And we're talking mm. about pictures of Jarvis Landry and Tyron Matthew in the black and gold. And it looks illegal. It looks like it shouldn't even be happening. I feel guilty looking at it. Like, I, I feel like I'm doing I'm committing a crime. Put my phone in private uh, yeah. mode. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Let's link up with the best Nick Underhill down in New Orleans as he joins us now here on the Jordy Collada show. Nikki, good morning. How are you? Hey, doing well. Hey, you, you guys can't slander me behind the scenes, man. What happens with the camera? And I, don't get the <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We, uh, we're putting the bloopers up on social media after the, uh, after the show, for sure. Um, all right, take me to your, your, your latest is, is about Jarvis and just how the football is finding him on the field here early on, and, and that's just what happens to him usually when he's, he's on the team. What, what has, have you seen just the, the, the instant impact that some of these guys that they've brought in in the offseason, guys like Jarvis and Tyron, have made here early on? Yeah, so the, the thing with Jarvis is I put it like this. I mean, it, it's a guy that looks like he's a number one receiver, and they didn't have anybody that looked like a number one or a number two receiver last year even. And just the way he gets open, he gets open quickly, he gets open in a manner that kind of forces the quarterback to, to see him quickly. And I think just his presence, look, it's it's we've seen four practices, so you don't want to make too much of anything, but I think his presence is, is even opening up things in Jameis's game that, that we didn't see last year. You know, the, the big talking point was those passes over the middle and – Look, he's getting open quickly on crossing routes and the slants, and the ball's getting out, and it's it's there, it's on point, it's accurate, and I think he's he's making Jameis feel more confident in in his ability. And 
it, it's it's just it's just different seeing somebody that can actually play the position uh, at that level commiserate with with that spot on the depth chart and the the ball's finding him it's it's you know he's he's the one guy that's kind of dominating these practices and you know th- there's maybe 11 first team passes in every practice and yesterday he got three targets uh last week there was a practice where he got five targets in a mm-hmm. practice so it, it's just he's that open the ball's finding him and you know now that mini camps there and all the players are there he's actually going against all the good guys in the secondary and he's still keeping it up so Starting out at this point, I mean, it looks like they stole this guy three million dollars a year in in a market where it was going crazy for wide receivers. It it really looks like they went in, they got a playmaker for dirt cheap, and and I feel pretty confident even this early on, um, saying that that I think he's he's gonna he's gonna change the offense a little bit and have a significant impact in, in the things they do. Uh, Nick, you mentioned it. They didn't have a wide receiver that looked like a one target uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now. This wide receiver room looks like it's one of the best in the NFL. Mike Thomas is in the facility. He's not on the field, but he's around. Uh, and then you you mentioned Jarvis. You got Alave. Callaway looked really good out there yesterday. Where, where, where do you what, what do you have as far as expectations out of this group, this unit? They have fastly become one of the most talented in the league overnight, it feels. Yeah, if Mike comes back and he's 70% of Mike Thomas, I mean, I, I think still they have a, a ridiculous – depth chart at that position and you know it was good just seeing Mike yesterday him being on the sidelines like felt like the biggest thing that happened because that's the first time we've really seen him out of practice in, in more than a year he made an appearance last year in a, in a game showed up on the sidelines but this feels a little different it's it's a closeness he's he's watching the guys play uh you know I thought it was kind of funny he came out there in his in his uniform just you know to kind of make sure everybody knew that he was watching the practice but it's important to see him out there and you know he's at least bought in where you know if we were talking about him last year around this time it it was it was you know what's his his stance is he going to be a member of the saints in a year does he want to be traded i I think a lot of that stuff at least for this season is in the rear view and you you know that he's going to be bought in but i think as far as you know the guys they have a lot of it looks really good callaway's in a position where where he should be you know third or fourth on a depth chart I think Traquan Smith is a good three, four, five guy on a depth chart and has a place on a team. Deontay Hardy then falls into a spot where he can kind of be a specialty receiver, and that's where he needs to be. He probably isn't someone that you want to rely on to, to have, you know, have to play fifty percent of your snaps. And you know, now you can put him where where he can uh, succeed. So I think everything is set up for Jameis Winston to have a good season, and, and I really think it comes down to him as far as how how far this team goes. If he's builds on the stuff he did last year, stays out of trouble, can open up the middle of the field a little bit and just find some more uh, or rather continue on that path of consistency that he was on last year. I think this is a team that can win a lot of games and the defense is going to be good. The receivers are going to be good. If they get a left tackle and they get Jameis playing well, I I think they're in good shape. Alvin Kamara was out there yesterday. You had a couple of images of him catching passes from Jameis Winston. Uh, he looks so good catching the football. Where, where, what did you see from him physically? It was the first time we've seen him um, at, at, at one of these mini camps, obviously this one being the first mandatory. Yeah, he, he looks ready to play. Um, you know, he, he always works out really well in the offseason. And, and I think he's someone that, that's just kind of learned how to perfect that. And we see the videos and, and he shows up, he's ready to go all the time. And, and you know, he looked like, you know, someone that's that's been working hard. He's moving well. And, you know, he... he he had probably uh, one of the more explosive plays of the day. Jarvis had, had one down the field uh, to end the uh, two-minute session, and, and that was definitely the play of the day. Went up, caught a pass over Bryce Thompson. But uh, Alvin had another one going down the field, ran by Pete Werner, and just the explosiveness and the route running and all that stuff is is, is right there. And, look, I you know, they, they didn't have good attendance at, at the, the voluntary port, part of the offseason program, but I do think that, that, you know, the last two years of not having OTAs and – and kind of going through the off season on your own is, is put these guys in a, in a position where they know probably better exactly what they need to do. And I think when you have a veteran team, you kind of got to give them the leniency to, to go out and do the things they need to do and to trust them. And, you know, in the case of a guy like Demario Davis, who, who wasn't at the OTAs, I think, uh, you know, I think with someone like him, you know, he's, he's got kids, he's got a family, he's, he's entering his mid thirties. I think giving him the respect and the space to do 
what he needs to do to, to maintain his familial relationships and get ready for the season, that might add years to someone's career. So, I mean, I think you just kind of got to manage it in a certain way. And, and you know, I think Alvin's kind of in that, that same space. If you press him too hard, it, you know, it's probably not worthwhile because he is going to show up, he's going to be ready. And when it's time to play, like, you can count on him to be ready to, to do what he needs to do. Will Lutz was cleared for all football activity earlier this week. How big of a story is that for New Orleans? <laughs> Man, it's it's kind of like stupid to talk about a kicker like that, but it's massive. Like yeah. it, they lost multiple games last year. It's worth three wins, coach. They didn't have a kicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real though, like like he, he he's that significant. And look, I think it changes how you call plays too. Like if you trust your kicker, what you're doing on third down changes as opposed to when you don't trust your kicker as far as what you're doing on third down. So I think it just gives a confidence in the play calling. It gives a confidence in the kicker, obviously. And it's a, it's a huge development. Like he, Will Lutz's value went up more than anybody's value did, like by not playing. Like he became one of the more important players on the team. And uh, I mean, it was obvious really quickly. Like they make the playoffs if, if he's on the field last year and not hurt. So it's it's a huge thing for him. Um, Alave, you, you mentioned some of these rookies. What, what, what was your... Um, grasp of seeing them around everybody uh, here this 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 past week of of them working around the entire group. I know that they've been at the the voluntary stuff, but to see them around uh, yesterday, how did they fit in? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Uh, I, th- I think the team's going to make all these guys kind of earn their spot. Alave's already kind of done that. He's he's running with the first team, and you know it's it's fairly obvious he's uh, one of the better, more talented players at that position. So. He looked good. He had one route. I, I, I saw him go up against Marshawn Lattimore. Ball didn't find his way, but it looked like he got open um, running a curl. So he, he's, he moves well. He's, his athleticism is just it's, – it's different. Like he, he just moves in a way that, 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 you know, a lot of guys aren't able to move. And it's just impressive to, to kind of watch him go through his route running and how he details it. And, and I think he's going to be really good really quick. Um, Elante Taylor, I think, has, has a little bit of, you know – growth that he needs to make technique wise just kind of knowing what he's doing and why he's doing it but you know he's 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 fast he's big he 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 can turn quickly I mean I think he's going to be a good player in time I just think it's going to take a little bit of time and same thing with with Trevor Penning uh the the first round left tackle um you know people around the team that I've talked to they they kind of you know they talk about him in the sense of you know there, there's a long runway he needs to go to to be ready to play to do things soundly technique wise to kind of reel in his aggression and um you know they, they've said on and off the record they're they're comfortable uh starting james hurst at that spot if they got to in time like they know penning's going to be the guy but if it's not week one and it happens to be week eight or it happens to be 2023 like they're fine with that they they're comfortable starting the best guys they don't care you know if they got a first round pick waiting a little bit so He's going to have to earn it. You know, Alante Taylor is going to have to earn it right now. He's behind uh, Lattimore, Paulson Adebo, and uh, Bradley Roby. So, I mean, these guys, uh, you know, they're going to have to fight to get on the field. And, you know, I think uh, in the case of both of them, it looks like they have the athletic ability and the talent for it to work out. But it might take a a little bit of time uh, for them to get to to where they need to be. NewOrleans.football is the website. Make sure you subscribe today. Dennis Allen, it looked like, was working on a lot of situational football early on in, in minicamp. How have you seen his strategy approaching this stuff as a head coach now? It, it looked like he is putting an emphasis on this stuff very early in the process. Yeah, look, it looks it looks a lot like a Sean Payton practice. If you went out there and didn't know the head coach changed, like you wouldn't you wouldn't really think anything different is going on. Um Maybe you don't hear the head coach yelling as, as loudly as much, but he's, uh, you know, he's in there, he's leading, he's doing his own thing. Um, you know, and, and it's just, you know, the, the major difference for, for DA is that maybe you don't see him lurking around the defense as much. You know, he's on the offensive side of the field. Chris Richard uh, and, and Ryan Nielsen kind of seem to be empowered to, to oversee that side of the ball and, and you know, kind of put their stamp on it a little bit. So, some of the stuff in the secondary, you know, the, the way they're going about it looks a little bit different. You know, guys like Corey Robinson, an assistant on the staff, is, is taking on a bigger role with the cornerbacks. And you just – you see, you know, some little changes. But overall, like, the things they do, how they do them, the DNA of this team, you know, really hasn't hasn't changed. It, it's really familiar. And, you know, I think that's the reason why they hired them. They feel like they have a team that, that's ready to win now. And, 
they aren't going through a process where things look completely different. And, you know, DA even spoke on that. He said, you know, if he starts changing things for the sake of changing them, the players are going to see through that and, and kind of, you know, reject it and feel like it's a little bit phony. So the stuff they do works. They're comfortable with it. And, you know, really, like, it, it does look a lot like a Sean Payton scripted practice. Um, Tyron Matthew in that defensive backfield, what, what does he do? From a leadership standpoint, and then seeing him out there physically, what what does he allow you to do on the field? So, I mean, from a leadership standpoint, I mean, like people gravitate to toward him, and you, you see it. You see the young players kind of gravitating toward him, and you know they they say in the classroom, like he's the way he kind of goes through the process of learning things, and, and just how he is in the playbook. People follow behind that. Um, him showing up for the OTAs when when a lot of the veteran players weren't there, like that sets a tone of leadership. And hey, this is this is you know I want to be here, I want to lead, and, and I'm going to be here for the young players. And you know they see that and they're going to him asking him for advice um, on the field. I mean, it, it's 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 interesting kind of how they're approaching things so far. Like last year, their primary coverage was cover one, and that that's a single high coverage. And you have a guy like Marcus Williams and his range sideline to sideline, like that that makes sense to lean into it. It looks like they're doing a little bit more two safety shell stuff and, you know, maybe a little more cover three stuff, which is also a single high look, but they disguise it a little bit. So it's it's Tyron and Marcus May back there, you know, in a two look. And on some plays in their walkthrough, May's not doing the team stuff in their walkthrough. Some plays you'll see Tyron drop back, Marcus come up. Some plays you see Marcus go back, Tyron come up. So I think that interchangeability is going to allow them to do a lot uh, with their disguise. And, and, you know, I think a good example of that, like, you see Tom Brady, like the most decorated quarterback in NFL history. He knows everything. You can't really fool him. When he plays the Saints, like they're confused. And now they have players that are more versatile and more interchangeable. And it's not just them. Like PJ Williams is another one of those guys. So if they go to a dime package, now you got three guys that can kind of be anywhere on a snap. And they have another guy, Bryce Thompson, they like a lot, second year player. He can play safety, he can play cornerback. So I think they're just trying to get a lot of these chess pieces and they want them on the field. I think you're going to see six DB sets this year. I think you're going to see seven DB sets this year. And these guys are just going to be moving all over the place and, and making it really hard to read. And I, that starts with, with Tyron and Marcus May. They're both guys that can do pretty much everything. And I think it changes a little bit how they operate, but they're going to, you know, and you can already see it. They're, they're forming the scheme around the talent, not trying to fit these guys into what they were doing. And, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's tough to lose Malcolm Jenkins and, and Marcus Williams in the same offseason. And we'll see if they're better. But I think uh, for sure they're going to be a more dynamic defense that can do a lot of different things. Where's your feeling on and what's your expectation for, for Marcus Lattimore in this defense? Uh, it's, it's been made of all of the offseason signings, but he's the guy that's been kind of steadfast as, as your lockdown corner. What's the expectation on him going into another season? So I think the thing with him is, is you know, over the years, it's kind of always been how focused is he week to week? Is he excited about the guy he's going to be covering? This year, you look at the schedule, you go down the schedule, like everybody they're playing has like a number one receiver. And I think that gives you the best shot of getting the best effort out of him every week. There's, there's no gimmies, really. There's no there's no buys. You know, if, if he wants to go through this and, you know, prove that he's the best every week against the best competition – like, they're coming one after another, after another, after another. And, um, you know, just kind of, kind of the way he's been and, and, and how motivated he is on, on a week-to-week basis, it sets up well for him to be locked in consistently. And if he goes through this gauntlet at the end of the season, like, he, he can, you know, have his standing as, as okay, I'm, I'm the best. Like, sh- you know, show me where, where someone did better. Like, he, I think that the level of competition this year – is at that level and that's something that's important to him he tweets about it you know he talks about it and he's got the path to to show that week after week and you know if i if i had to bet like i'm betting on him showing up and doing well because he always does against these really good guys he does are they done in free agency um no i don't think so i mean they got they got a handful of guys trying out david johnson's trying out it, it rookie minicamp this week joe schober um senio calamente he used to play for the team yeah. you know i think they do need to make a move at running back um you know there's, there's a possibility alvin gets suspended and even if not like i think they need one more you know tony jones jr last year showed some promise wasn't necessarily consistent enough to kind of kind of ride with him they got a, a zigbo back he's in practice he looks okay the udfa abram smith 
he looks okay too, and, and they have you know some some upside on him. But I think bringing in a vet that sets that barrier at least to where okay, Abram Smith beat out David Johnson, and, and they're in the spot. I think that's kind of a, a good place to to you know set a bar. Um, you know, Johnson was out there yesterday. You know, I think it's going to take some time to see what, what he can do. He he kind of you know definitely isn't moving like he did when he had the two thousand yard season, but. In a pinch, can he be a, a solid vet, someone who can fill in, get it done, allow you to still run your scheme? You know, I, I think so. He's just kind of got to show that that the ability to produce is still there. And I do think that they need another linebacker. It gets it gets thin after uh, Demario Davis, Pete Werner, um, and they, they got Eric Wilson out there who, who looks okay. But I think adding one more guy to that mix, I think, is something they need to do as well. At Nick underscore Underhill is where you follow him on Twitter. Another day of mini camp coming up from New Orleans, making sure. You keep up with all the latest over at NewOrleans.Football. Get your subscription today. There is no offseason at NewOrleans.Football. There is a story that is updated routinely over there, whether it's draft, whether it's mini camp, whether it's depth charts, whether it's just observations. Get over to NewOrleans.Football and check it out. Last one, Nikki. I'll get you out of here. Another story broke on the Sean Payton Miami thing where Miami said to Sports Illustrated they were going to break the bank. They were set to give him $100 million bucks. Tom Brady last week was at minicamp saying that he did have conversations with the Dolphins in the offseason. How close do you think that was to happening, if, if at all? I know it's all for not now, but just for, for our business, it's fun to kick around. How, how, how close do you think that was, was to happening? I don't think it was very close, honestly, from the Saints side. Like, they, they reached out behind the scenes, and there were overtures backdoor to, to Sean Payton. The way I heard it um, is, you know, those weren't seriously considered. And there were, you know, kind of a backdoor, um, you know, message to the Saints, hey, would you consider this? My feeling on that was that the Saints felt like, you know, if Sean doesn't want to coach in 2022, Sean isn't coaching in, in 2022. And I don't think they were ready to, to kind of explore that. I mean, if, if it got serious and there's a huge offer, I think, you know, maybe that, that – Maybe you got to pay attention, but but their initial feeling was, you know, this isn't happening. I don't think Sean was super interested from the way I heard it. Could be wrong. Um, but look, here, here's my main thing from this. Like, all these stories are coming out through Miami reporters, and we're around teams. Like, when those stories are all coming out through Miami reporters and yeah. there's no national people talking about it, that says that it's Miami Dolphins yeah. sources. Like, why are they leaking this stuff about a coach they didn't hire and undermining – Mike McDaniel, like, it, it's the craziest thing to me. Like, it's undermining the confidence in the coach you hired. Like, oh, we really wanted this guy, but we settled for this guy. Like, yeah. why are you doing that? I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand why the story keeps coming out the way it is. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's that's kind of how Miami's been for a while. And, and you know, I think, um, you know, they, they should probably try to, to quiet down uh, some of these stories. We were set to break the bank for this guy, but we settled for this bum. <laughs> we wanted Tom Brady. And we wanted Tom Who Brady wants season Brady. tickets? Yeah. We wanted Tom Brady yeah, and Sean right. Payton. Instead, we got Mike McDaniel and Tua. Uh, Nick, keep up the great work, man. It's been excellent <laughs> to read your, uh, read your stuff from uh, Saints facility, and it's, uh, it's good to see the black and gold back on the field, man. Thank you for your time. All right, man. There he is, Nick Underhill, checking in from New Orleans. Football, the best, simply the best. I'm telling you, go if you're looking for New Orleans Saints information, go check out New Orleans. Football. Pick up the subscription today. And as we said, no off season. Uh, he didn't take a day off. Uh, Johnson Spillers is our dentist. Remember, everybody at uh, Johnson Spillers can help you out with all of your dentist needs today, all your dental needs today. Uh, whether it is general dentistry, pediatric dentistry, uh, if you're looking for a tooth implant, or if you just need Brotox or some Botox. Uh, stop in and see him over at Johnson and Spillers. Couple of locations. One's in Gonzales on Prepara Avenue. The other is in Baton Rouge, right here between Segan Lane and Blue Bonnet. Go check them out. Easiest way to do it online, johnsonspillers.com. Johnsonspillers.com is where you hit them online. Any mailbag questions? None. None? None. That is our fault. Uh, mailbag every Wednesday. <laughs> we will do a better job of reminding you on that. We appreciate everybody for stopping by and reacting and interacting. Uh, here with us. A uh, special shout out to our guy, quarterbacks coach Joe Sloan, mm. uh, for sitting in with uh, 30 minutes answering all the questions. It was great, man. Got the tough ones out the way. Yeah. Learn anything? Anybody learn anything from Joe Sloan? Uh, yeah, I think he, he didn't, did, didn't he, really tip his hand. He didn't did tip great, his hand. Yeah, but that was very yeah. close to the vest on the quarterback yeah, conversation. Told you, you better watch this guy. He's going to try to get some information yeah. on the quarterbacks on you. You better be guarded. But he, he does seem like a really good recruiter. He does. I, I, I'd get Sloan yeah. for sure. I got Sloan. I got Sloan. We got Sloan. We need the print the shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hunter Fournette, hashtag mailbag. What's the bet? Thank you, Hunter. Ah. Mm. Uh, yesterday we gave you a couple of futures. 
uh, on uh, on some MVP chatter. Plus twelve hundred for Joey at the window over at Caesar Sportsbook. Make sure you are downloading the Caesar Sportsbook app and um, using the promo code FM fifteen as the letter F, the letter M fifteen to uh, get money to bet money over at Caesar Sportsbook. Uh, what's the bet today, Lloyd? Have you had a chance to look at your... No, uh, we, what, what did happen, and what we should be paying attention to, is our good friends over at Mike'd Up, is Mikey is dabbling in Major League Baseball now, 4-2 and two last night. So he sent us some picks. They tweeted out from that account. So keep your head on the swivel for Mikey's picks, because like you, like you obviously know, he's pl- played in the bigs. He has a relationship with a lot of these guys and knows how they pitch. He understands like road travel and like, what, what that can kind of mean for, at least in a gambling sense, or how a team operates going from a road series and like you know, having to travel across the coast. And so he does a good job of breaking all that stuff down, 4-2 and two last night. So keep your head on the swivel for the mic'd up picks. I am looking at a little bit of hockey. Does that start tonight for the uh, NHL Finals? Is it tonight? Is it tonight? I think so. And uh, if- I've got Golden State and Boston tomorrow night. Boston is minus four in that game for game five, game six. And that's what I'm already on. Of already the NBA on game Finals. six. Got the Celtics. Okay. I bought it down to two, though. I get nervous with that three-point swing, so uh, always yes. try to get under the three-point You've got Tampa threshold. Bay and Colorado tonight. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning against the Colorado Avalanche. I'm looking for a number here from our I've friends. got it. Uh, so with, with hockey, it's a lot like baseball. They have a run line, which they call a puck line. Uh, Tampa Bay going to Colorado. Colorado has been a wagon. I think they ran through the West. I don't think I think they swept both series, if I'm not mistaken. Like, they've been un. Believable in the playoffs, but Tampa Bay Lightning coming off of a Stanley Cup last year, they're going a little bit of a. I think they won two in a row. Yeah, this might be a three-peat for Tampa Bay, and they don't lose. So I might take a little. No, I can't go puck line because minus two hundred. I think I'm going to go over six goals first game. Wow. Yeah, let's a go shootout. Let's go over in the first game of the finals. Both teams are great offensively. Tampa Bay can put a number on you quickly, so I'm going to go over six goals minus one fifteen. Over six goals, and then I've got uh, four three. You know what? I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Lightning. Are you going puck line or? or uh, is that plus one thirty? I'm looking at for no. That's the puck line. You're, you're so you're catching a, a goal and a half, but it's minus two hundred. So you've got to bet two hundred to win a hundred. So on uh, on Tampa Bay. Yeah, that's stiff. But okay. you can go money line, and you can go plus one forty. So bet a hundred, win a hundred forty. Yeah, that's what I want to do. All right. So you're calling it upset first game. Yes, yeah, so I want Tampa Bay on a road win here. So we got the over, game. and we got. Go a, little, I think that bodes well for both of us. Little Boston Golden State type, mm-hmm. uh, Boston little back and forth. Steal one, mm-hmm. game one. Tampa Bay gonna steal this one. Colorado. I know zero about hockey. So. Me either. I just acted uh, like I did. I just faked what's it. What's the for good Fake yeah, it till you make that's it. That's right. You definitely googled that for sure. Smart guy. <laughs> uh, Cordell Music mailbag question. What about Robert Steeples? Is he coming on the show? Oh, funny you uh-huh. should ask, Cordell. Uh, tomorrow morning, seven forty-five. Coach Steeples is. Uh, is confirmed. He will be in studio with us tomorrow. Really looking forward to that conversation, man. Really looking forward to that conversation. Hashtag mailbag Joe Wayman says, I have the first overall pick in my dynasty draft. Should I take Josh Allen or Justin Herbert? I traded my 107, 307, uh, 107 and 707 uh, is how I did it. Uh, I would take probably jo- Josh Allen, huh? Yeah, Josh Allen probably put up more points. He runs yeah. more than right. Than he Josh seems like he's more. Is he's Burrow more not in the running really. for this? I don't see any Burrow. Well, would you not? I mean, he took a swing. Obviously, got the first overall pick, but I mean, the, the weapons that he's going to have, new offensive line. Burrow should be in the mix of those two guys. I La- would imagine. Last time I got first pick in the fantasy draft, I picked Aaron Rodgers. That was the year he like broke his or pulled his calf. Oh, no. oh, it was oh, tough got, year. You got tough year Rogers. for the kid. But guess who my backup was? Lamar Jackson. Oh, okay. See, I don't understand how dynasties work because I don't think you're supposed. to. I guess you can hold on to one, right? Uh, that's what I'm wondering if he's doing this, and that's what that's why Burrow still fits the mold in my mind. Mm-hmm. He's a young quarterback. He's gonna run a little bit. He can run a little bit. You know, they're gonna. He's got Jamar. You maybe double up there. See if yeah. you can get a little double dip. Yeah, but then you when you get two teammates, you have to worry about that bye week. Like that mm. type of deal. That's happened to me before, too. I don't know anything about fantasy football. Just back-to-back champs. No big deal. Uh, no big deal. Back-to-back? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Weird flex, but okay. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. I don't even like fantasy either. Wow. I just, just hazards of the job. Those are the ones that win. Yeah, hazards of the job. Mm. And the, which they, my group that I'm in, thinks it's 
they want to kick me out because, well, he does it for a living. It's like, I don't look uh, at fantasy football for a living, coach. I'm barely in it. Guy's going to get slapped next time yeah. he sees one of his friends over <laughs> fantasy football. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what it's turning into. It's turning into the, yeah, it's very contentious. Out, yeah, be better. Sure. Wait, did y'all know Alex Bregman won the league? No. Yes. The one that he slapped him over? Yes. Mike Trout was on, uh, <laughs> like, a lot, like, during a game, doing an interview, and he was like, yeah, uh, Honestly, Alex Bregman won the league, but don't go ask him about this, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, <laughs> oh my God! I mean, it's all—it's already turned into it's so petty. And this is what happens when you have Major League Baseball have too much time on their hands. Yeah, like, hanging around. The the shirts? Shirts. That's what I'm time. saying. Like, we should probably make some shirts. Like, to please make this go away. No, we're gonna dead time. make it bigger. It's unbelievable. But I have a future in for Micah Parsons, Defensive Player of the Year, plus mm. one thousand. I, look, Coach. Gosh, he's a killer. I know. That's he's what I'm a saying. Killer. He's a, and I mean the top two are T.J. Watt and Aaron Donald, obviously. So I'm gonna go with Michael Parsons and see where that takes me. Wow. I don't mind that bet at all. No, I don't either. Yeah. He was good I last year. What did he, yeah, I mean they wanted him to win defensive MVP but, last year. Yeah, he was in the race. Yeah, he was in the race. But he was a rookie, so right. So you just get that rookie uh, of the year. But I mean, he was like Jamar as far as rookie of the year, like, right? I like mean, him was, and Jamar were like offensive, defensive, and it wasn't even close, was it? Mm. Who competed with Jamar? Was it was the, there was a quarterback? Who was the quarterback? Um, not not Kyle Wilson at uh, New York. Um, was it? Was there a rookie quarterback that stood out last year that that was? Is there anybody obvious that we're missing? Is yeah, that, 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 I feel like I'm Dana. missing somebody. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. Out there. <laughs> Expose ourselves. Right. I told you we don't pay attention to this. <laughs> it was Jamar, uh, right? It was yeah, Jamar. I mean, it was really just Jamar. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know who it was? It was uh, Mac Jones. Yeah. Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Mm. But it really wasn't close. No, but that's what you have to worry about is because they want to give it to a quarterback. Yeah. And Mac Jones had – then when he went two for three in a game, <laughs> I think see, that pretty much sealed the Belichick deal. Belichick hired Matt Patricia as his offensive coordinator? Come Dude, on. Belichick is in such shit. <laughs> I mean, not only that, but I mean, like, what are you doing? I, I mean, like, who are we to question Belichick? But, I mean, how are you going to, in today's football, bring in a defensive-minded guy – to coach your young quarterback in a new offense, and he's from the defensive side of the ball. It's like Bill system. That's overthinking, right? Yeah. Like or that underthinking, is, or just like I, I know this guy. I trust him. Can you learn offense in six months? Like, yeah, I go against it all the time. That's a bizarre move. But Bill has a small circle. He only no trusts a few people. I, I get that. I mean, look I how long that. he had. He held on to McDaniel's. Like he's like, I'm not getting rid of him. He, he spurned him twice. He did he get offered the Colts job? And he was like, yeah. don't take that job. Well, he took it. And then you, like, Bill Urban called him. Was yeah. like, Ursay's a drunk. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, could you see this offer he gave me? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and Andrew Luck's leaving. I'll make sure of it. <laughs> uh, Nathan Gordon, hashtag mailbag. Who is each of y'all's front runner for winning the LSU starting quarterback job? I got Nuss. Who you got? Nuss Bus. When you say winning the starting job, who's going to start day one or is going to be start the majority of the game? Starter. Starter majority of the game. Yeah. Nuts, but I don't think he'll start game one. I'm with you on that. Which is crazy. I know it is. Crazy. Miles, game one? I think uh, so. I kind of think it's Miles. We'll Trot out there with Miles. I mean, yeah. I there was just so That's first the promise. Mis- like, what are we thinking? Little handshake, I was going to say, what are, we, what are we thinking? Deal. First mistake coming at pulling? No, he's got. Uh, I think, short, short leash? No, you let him ride the whole game. Mm. Unless it looks just. Mississippi State. In it just depends. First year. It depends. Like on if he's broken yeah. and it's like, all right, never mind. Yeah. He can't do this. Yeah, we can't. But if he goes, but if he goes out there and slings it for four hunch and three tuds, then you got a problem. Now we got a quarterback. Now the nuts bus has got a flat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> tough. We got a couple of bum wheels in the back, bro. Gonna look tough over here. Uh, yeah, it will. <laughs> <laughs> it'll look tough. Just like our Patello train. It'll look tough. <laughs> Tony B's not the. Uh, he's not our guy right now. Park uh, it in the back. Uh, All right, everybody, have a good day. Hit that like, share button, and uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow morning. Remember, Mic'd Up tonight, 6 o'clock, originating from right here at FM Digital Studios. Follow us on social media. Uh, Jay Chillin, will Walker Howard get any snaps at uh, at any point this year? Yeah, I think so. He's got four games to play, so he doesn't redshirt. I think they want to get him at least some experience, right? I mean, trot him out there, let him get the speed, make a few plays, get his confidence right. Um... New and Mexico. Still, be able, still be able to keep the, the red shirt on. UAB in New Mexico is probably where you'll see him. Maybe New Mexico. Southern? Not even Southern? Getting, Week two? I think that's too might early. Might be too early. Yeah. Might be too early. UAB, um, he might ride that whole game out. Yeah. When it, When is that game? 
it's the November nineteenth. Yeah, that's so the, the second game. That's the game, game you might year. start. Yeah, that's up to you. Might, you might <laughs> yeah, play the whole you game. You might play all four quarters that night. We're gonna know a lot. It's funny what we're talking about now. By November nineteenth, we were gonna just have this whole thing flipped upside down. Oh no! You're no. like, whoa, God! We thought Walker no, was gonna no. play. He's starting. Right. God, <laughs> look who transferred. Right. Look who's here. Have a great day. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning, seven a.m. Then a and m right after that. Woof. They'll be fight. They'll be fighting for that eighth win. <laughs>